nasty. Exactly. Right when you so you're chickening out with fighting that thing and then not even setting it up good, but oh well, it is what it is. <laughs> and then Gib and Horace show up and we're like And then we all get killed by the Goliath water monster thing in the jiggy. I feel right. togetherness is important. We are live OTNG session fifty one. Covering from a TPK. Tonight we've got Ethan Nils, Peter, and Tom Mike. Ethan, do you want to kick <laughs> off the screen share for the Roll20 session? Sure. Thanks. I will do that. I have you on the 11th day of the Broken Star at 1 p.m., standing at an edge of a murky pool in the caverns beneath the Fang Forest. Anybody want to provide a recap for last week's session? <clears throat> mm. so, I'll, I'll do it if you guys don't want to, but I, I thought I would give the players an opportunity. Um, one thing I'm wondering about is, one thing I found kind of annoying when we were in the gates again was that if you missed a session, you didn't, you did, you were always missing those areas that you didn't weren't around for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the map. So I didn't know oh, yeah. if while we talked, if we wanted to run. The hammy party thing just through everywhere so that they the the, the other guys yeah, can see. I him. think that's a really good idea. That's an excellent that's idea. I was going to suggest. Well, I'll so. run him around while you guys talk. Okay. Why don't you start back in the library cavern because I think that was the last common area that you guys had explored. Well, right. Yeah, this last common area. We we had started on the hill and did a little exploring. Didn't find much, but the library. That's a good place to start. All right. So, I'll so what's going on? Are oh. recaps going on? Or yeah, a recap. Yeah. A recap and, 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 a, and a map tour, thanks to Nils, so that you can get... Um, so, so your maps get, are up to date. Your okay. map's updated, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, good idea. He's a smart one. All right, so I will leave it. Who's going to narrate this bad boy? Go ahead, Peter. Yeah. Good. Well, well I'll, um, I'll... did Ethan listen to it? <laughs> no, someone said TPK, and I went, eh. <laughs> that sounds sad. So go, ahead, go ahead. You can, yeah, he, he can be updated because I list, I literally did listen to the whole thing. So. Okay. So we started exploring at the top of that hill where the tree was and the, and the burned out shanties. And it was pretty clear to us that um, there had been some kind of struggle or fight. And there was some kind of mucus all over the tree that seemed to either protect it from the fire or did something. We couldn't quite tell. It appeared that the mucus was coming out of the tree, like it had mucus itself. I'm not sure of that, but that was what it appeared to be. Am I right on that, Aaron, how you described it? Oh, we lost Aaron. No, oh, I'm here. Yes, that was exactly right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't want to be feeding out false information that gets us killed later. Um, I don't recall... I recall I was finding some um, bits and pieces up here, but nothing really huge beyond that. We then explored down the hill and went along these woods, and we didn't go in them. There was a bunch of plants. That Those woods are more like a garden, like hedges and, um, and, and shrubs, and plants and weird plants. Yeah, you found and, some weird plants in there. Mm -hmm. But they were all identified as being poisonous or of a dark nature, and we felt and let's not mess with that. But it was clearly like somebody had a garden of poisonous stuff. And then we came there around. There's a mound in the garden that's sort of marked out on the map there in yellow. Right, that's right there, and we didn't approach that yet. Is that the mound there? Yeah. Oh, the lighter area is the light from above. That's right. Yeah. Let me um, let me shade that in a little bit for you guys, just so you have a frame of reference. No other purpose or reason. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> we were doing our best to avoid combat or confrontation we felt with just Nils and I. It was probably best to just explore. And so we thought, oh, what can the harm be? <laughs> so we come along here and discover upon closer inspection, these trees were actually not trees. They were huge freaking mushrooms. These ones that, that Hammy's near now are, are trees and oh, there are some the bodies amongst them. But the trees on the far side of the river are giant mushrooms. That's what it was. <clears throat> Thank you. And those giant mushrooms by way of descriptive description have like some gashes and slashes them as is like some huge clawed beast had raked them 
and there are these nodules um, that that sort of grow or form out of these caches. And there was also a, an altar on the um, within that mushroom grove, and that altar had like a carving on it, like a a, a beaked monstrosity with tentacles waving all about it. Um, in and hindsight, was the image on the altar anything like the creature we encountered at the end? You, you asked that. It Did is I? Not. That was no. Okay. Thank you. I don't. I. I don't remember some of this. Obviously, <laughs> um, we didn't cross the river yet. We noticed that we could. That the river there was space. <clears throat> there we go. Sorry, trying to move my map around. Up here, that we could move along the water. And as we did, we found a cavern here, worked our way in. And what, I don't recall what opened the door. Could you remind me, Aaron? Um, it was like sort of a, 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 a rock fall that you were able to sort of tear away some of the rocks and find a path. Isn't that where you ran into the bear or that was slightly up farther? That was a little further. Yep. Little okay. Yeah, that was, yeah, it was in just the next one up. Yeah. But in here, there was an altar. Three. Ban banish the ghost thingy. That no, was in, that was in the library. No, yeah, the next little, room up. That was a little further north. In oh. this room, the circular room, there is a, a large wooden dais that pretty much fills the room, and it's carved with runes and all kinds of things. Um, and there's a sort of a podium or whatnot in front of the dais. The only things that you were able to discern about that was uh, some runes that read something to the effect of hold aloft. You all didn't mess around with that, but sort of continued off to the north and discovered another secret door with a slanting, uh, smooth-faced finish, which led into a, another cavern where there were some sarcophagi. Right, right. And oh, from the sarcophagi really? came a, a raging bitch. Um, I think I dated her. Yes, which um, Ildevar she, turned away with her light. Well, she shrieked. And the priestess of Gerda. And she shrieked and drove off a few she, of your companions. Um, yeah, um, the elf and the halfling both ran down this tunnel here to the left. Fortunately, they both have infravision, but I rolled a lucky, was it a 19 or 20? Whatever it was, mm -hmm, fucking mm -hmm. pure luck. And she, on turn unholy. So she'll still be there when we get back. Um, but we we legged it after our friends because we didn't want to mess with her after that. And these pillars on either side here are human face, stone faces facing towards the sarcophagi, correct? Correct. Kind of towards the sarcophagi, kind of like at an angle. They're not facing one another. They're sort of facing east and west, northeast and northwest off of their current position, their, their marked position on the map. So then we came back here, back into the library to find um, um, the elf and the halfling pissing themselves. And we calmed them down, got them some hot tea, and decided we weren't going to go back up there. Um, actually, I think what Hammy said, there's no fucking way I'm going back up there. <laughs> I paraphrase. Um, and from here, I, if I recall correctly, is when we said, let's go on out. We, we did check these tunnels to make sure they all connected. and. There's three tunnels out of the library into this valley cave area. Um, we like to know where our areas of retreat are. And, oh, up here in the tunnel, sorry. That's what I forgot. After that, after we checked out the next tunnel up, and it was up here in this little area that we made friends with a bear. One that's across it. the river, right? <laughs> when right. You, when you all and decided you, to make your crossing and check out the altar. Right, and he waited there. So that's the bear. Don't hurt him. He's a he, he's my buddy, and so we came over to the altar, though we didn't alter the altar. <laughs> Sorry, and then we worked our way along the. No, we followed the river, didn't or the creek, didn't we? If I you call it correctly, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And as we got to the top of this hill here, we noticed a cave went opening to the south, and as we approached it we saw that there was some kind of mystic circle that appeared to be broken. Correct. And that circle should be marked on the map. It is. 
Can you guys all see that thing now? Mm -hmm. Excellent. And then we decided, well, let's get close to the water, but not too close. Hammy freaking hates the water. Mm -hmm. um, it smells like fish in here. Um, oh, there's our footprints. No, we followed footprints because they went straight to the water and straight back. That's why we approached the water mm -hmm. to see. Maybe mm -hmm. they threw something in or... Apparently they went and talked to this thing because this big freaking fish well, creature thing. Well, came. and they gave it some treat or something or something to eat. Something, yeah, no kidding. Well, right, and the and the big creature um, came sort of bubbling up, burbling up out of the pond of the muck, mm. and uh, had one look at you and saw Hammy standing there in his with his hat on. His yeah, because he took hat. a hat from one of the from was one of the guards or something there. One of the one of the corpses. Yeah, so I was very fortunate found. that Hammy did that. Yeah. <laughs> so then he talked with him a little bit, and that's kind of where we wrapped up. And what and what he call him? The uh, the beast called him something. Oh, Tiny little monk. Yeah. Little monk. Yeah, little monk. Little so monk. apparently these guys are monks. What was the name of the beast again? It's just a big. It doesn't have a it, name. It didn't have a name. Do, is there a handout or no? You shared it separately. Uh, I shared it separately. I should, I, on, in retrospect, I should have provided a handout because then that led to some reading of the beast and some some namings. And some Kill the beast. The beast. The beast of the pond, or whatever you which, want. Which which I've already forgotten all of, fortunately. So I'm not. <laughs> it, there's no critique here. It's just a. It's my own GM observation, right? <laughs> Got you. Uh, let's see. Things scared the crud out of me. Where are my maps? Why are they absent? What will you do? <laughs> All right. I'm just working up the next map for you guys, which I didn't have time to do, so I'm sort of doing it in the background. Is there anything you want to, Mike, as being a, a, an observer from the, from, from the, from the mists beyond of the multiverse, anything that you want to add or contribute to the recap that might be helpful for Ethan or even for the rest of the players? Yeah, because um, you have an objective view of it. Uh, or do you feel like that was a pretty good? Um, no, yeah, yeah, that was a good recap. <laughs> Except you forgot to mention that What's her name? Got to read the scroll, and there's all those spells on it. Ah, yes. Oh, that's, that's right. right. We found a scroll the... in the library <clears throat> with three spells. Scroll that was like bigger around than your leg, yeah, and your thigh, than Gerda's so meaty thigh. So I didn't quite understand that there. So did it? Did it have a total of three spells on it? It does. It... Okay. Yeah. So well, now you're here. You get to have them because I, I, they're things you can definitely use. Well, yeah, but like. Uh, like it's been discussed before, if you don't have room, then oh, I see. You can also just read it off if it's something we need. Right, to it use could be once. a scroll. Yeah, you could use it like literally as an instant spell. Correct. Right, like kind of as and, a one. And to be honest, one. I don't. I wasn't that impressed with them, so I don't remember what they were. But what were they? They weren't super impressive either from a from a GM perspective. I just simply rolled on a table to to see yeah, what yeah, was yeah, on that's that fine, scroll. But I don't, and I can tell you right now what they were. Um. Large thumb. There was a curse spell and entropy. Yeah. There was also uh, imperication. Remember that? Which actually was the curse spell. There was also a an entropy spell, like sort of we can make somebody or... sort of question their 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 motives. Oh, there's a okay. curse spell and imprecation. And then there is also like a choking um, cloud kind of spell. Right. That's right. And I think you're, yeah, you were, it was right. Yep. So we're, there were those. So that's those, the only thing that I would have added. Not that. Hmm, that was a good, that's a good, characters. that's a good call out. No, I'm, seriously. Thanks. I forgot that. that. That giant scroll. <laughs> Or have you just left it behind in the library? No, I would assume um, one of Nils's characters, simply because the elf might be able to use it. The slime of Shaw certainly would have taken it if if no one else was claiming it. Is that something? 
And if nothing else, it was good for somebody to use later. Yes, it could always be used as an instant spell. Yeah. Thieves can read spells or scrolls as well. Yes. In, in DCC. Um, thieves and any spellcaster can read them. There we go. Uh, let's see. What's Gil Nils' other character name? Slanishaw or Aracor? Aracor. And what magic weapons does Aracor have? Oh shit! He has our magic items. He has the gold, the 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 environment suit. Right, but is that actually considered magic, or is that just high technology? It's, well, what's the difference? Uh, yeah, what's exactly. the difference? Okay. <laughs> like yourself. All right, fine, fine. But fine. I'm just quoting. Right. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the barbarians, the barbarians about you. I mean, you're you're <laughs> Aracor, Slagnika, Ash. You're you're civilized, though. Sangha, I'm pretty sure you're pretty backwards. <laughs> um, so for Sangha, Aircore has, Aircore has no, nothing magical other than the um, environment suit. So, okay, so for Sangha, she has the Oboe of Doom, the refractive backpack, the box of paints, the environmental suit, and now the very fat scroll. Yes. Scroll of fattening. So here's something I'm I'm going to ask you a question, Nils, and you don't need to answer it right now. What can you do to ensure Sla Nagash's loyalty? Ooh. I'm assuming as Aragorn. Uh, yes. <clears throat> uh, very fat scroll. Maybe Aragorn can carry now bears this. the a significant amount of arcane power. As is her just and do right. <laughs> um, but it's something that I want you to think about. If you have an answer for me now, I'll take it, or you can or you can answer it at any time during or possibly at the end of this session, I will ask again. Okay. That's a good question. Right. Maybe hardcore. Why should she stick around? Yeah, our cart should carry um, this girl. All right, you guys are standing at the edge of the pond, and Hammy is treating with the beast, while the, the rest beast. of the party sort of looks on from uh, a few paces behind. It's still uh, could you so Hammy's out in front of us. Pardon me. Yeah, so Hammy, Hammy is out in front of us. Yeah, unfortunately, well, uh, kind of is. So, how far ahead of the? Uh, how far ahead it is? A few is paces, he? maybe three or four yards ahead of the rest of the party. Three or four yards ahead. Okay. So, um, get the attention of of both the monster and the uh, and Hammy, mm. and and say, uh, um, what would he say? He said. So, so monk, this is the the monster that you foretold of uh, the the great deeds and powerful things that he did. Is this not exactly right, sir? See, this is why we waited. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, yes. One of you make a personality. So, One of you make a personality check. Oh shit! It might be you. I don't who, think Hammy's. Who's doing it? Me or or Hammy? Well, let's know. see who's One got a better you. one. Let's be uh, honest. So, I got a personality so, of seven. It's gonna have to be you. <laughs> I've got a personality of fourteen. Yeah, you're rolling. <laughs> Hammy is not the most likable of individuals. It's the hat. The hat gives him it's, a plus two. Maybe, okay. <laughs> now he's a nine. <laughs> he's he's average. That's it. Oh, that's a pretty good roll. Um, yeah, so the the beast is buying it. You can see it sort of, it it sort of its spine fins ripple and its tentacles quiver and it's and and they sort of brush its its cheeks and its face. So so Gib Gib says, now our our esteemed uh, short little monk here. He has said many things of you, and and to be honest. Many of them uh, we have discounted or maybe not even believed, but here you are. And I would actually prefer that you would actually tell us of these great deeds so that we can hear it directly from the mouth of this great, gorgeous, 
awesome. Okay, so very he, powerful. Uh, his his yeah. tentacles slam down in front of him, and he starts to inch himself out of the water, and he's like, "Wizard, <laughs> I am the great and powerful." <laughs> <I'm> the- <laughs> And he's like right up in your face, and he says, "I've slain many enemies." And his co- and his tentacles come coiling out, and they <laughs> swirl around you, and he lifts you off your feet. And he and the and the beast turns to Hammy and says, "One reason why I should not destroy this wizard fool, like I've destroyed all the other enemies of the Black Druids." Oh, I thought, I thought the I, I, waves. I thought Gib won the roll, but <laughs> that's why he didn't die immediately. Because he's a friend of the Dark Druids. He's not. He's not the enemy. He's my friend, and I owe him a great debt. Please put him down, good sire. All right, make a personality check, Hammy. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I smell. I smell some luck burning. I just smell luck burning. Hey, if this oh, fell, the- fuck. So the the the. Can I burn luck? No, you don't need to burn any luck. That's, that's okay. a great. That's a very good roll. It's a very good result. Oh, I keep forgetting. We, everything except luck needs to be above. Sorry. Right. Yeah. High results for difficulty checks. Low results for luck checks. Um, yes. Yeah, so the 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 tentacles sort of unwind a little bit, and you can see. But the beast is like rearing up, up in, on its haunches, and uh, pretty fearsome in in its stature. Uh, um, meanwhile, yeah, while this is going on, I got a quick a fortitude check. Everywhere where the um, the tentacles wrapped against you are burning. I knew it. Like, if they were like so coated, as if they were like coated. That's to me. Acid. Yes. Fortitude is a plus one, but I don't know what it's based off do. of. It's based off your stamina and your mm-hmm. and your stat rolls. No, I had thought this so, might happen. Gert is right there, by the way. We just sure. want to say that. Um, your your skin starts drying and cracking, like as like if it had been baked out in the in the in the sun. It's so this really is what, really this painful. Him from his sweating problem. Does he have a sweating problem? Don't you remember if he wears a shirt, he like sweats all the time? He sweats maggots. Uh, sweats maggots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, do so do maggots start coming out? <laughs> no, not yet. We'll come back to you in just a minute. Uh the beast is is um has told you essentially how it's destroyed the enemies of the dark druids. Those umber eyes shall ne'er set their foot in this cavern while I watch. Their circle is broken, and I've destroyed their, and I've drowned their servant to their false god. I knew you were the guy who trashed that altar down there. I knew you were the one. Kindly put me down. Uh, he did. He released you. Oh, okay. Uh, and and that was when you realized, you know, this burning ef- effect that you were having, okay. where those you, where those you, tentacles coiled around you. You didn't give me a point that I got damaged or anything. I, like d- I haven't given you any damage yet. No, not yet. Oh, okay. Don't complain. Just being fair. Sure. <laughs> That's cool. Because I'm standing behind you with my hands in the spell motion, ready to lay hands on you in a second here. What will you do? Has he taken damage? No, he hasn't. He's just like it's like a it's like a it's like a an, an acid burn. His okay. skin is dry and cracking and blistering. Okay, I'm not gonna. Uh, not blistering, like like cracking, like uh, like if you left a plastic sheet out in the sun too long. So Gibb says, "Thank you for putting me down." And yes, your your tentacles do seem to be extremely powerful and. Very mighty. Yes, I can see that you can crush all foes before you. Uh, just as the little monk has said. Well, I'm wondering if we should maybe go on our way. Um, I wonder if I should cast um, Neutralize Poison Disease on Gib. Mm. Why don't we mm. wait until we're a bit further away? Because if he recognizes what that is, he might... 
Might not like a. I you might not like a priestess of Ildavar. That's true. Or that you're neutralizing something that he did. So inferring that he did something bad. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out. So, with with um, and then at that point, um, Gib says, and and as far as a, a a delicious treat, what is it that you like? Our little monk has not said that. Landwalkers, and he comes hunching up out of the pond. <laughs> I thought of you. Oh, okay. He was half out of the pond. Okay. Well, go get you some. Don't worry. Just wait here. We'll be right back. We know where to get a bunch of them. I'm wondering if we need to talk to him, maybe not right now, about how to repair the gate to be able to get out of here. Hammy, go ahead and make a personality check when you're ready. Ooh, not good. Um, shall I burn some luck? Uh, you can burn some luck. You Otherwise, I'm about to, to cast Word of Command. You need to get a... <clears throat> yeah, it's a DC... It's a DC 12. I don't think I have enough luck to burn. I'm at a 15. Mm, don't, don't, don't burn um, luck. Let, let's just pass. So is this thing a friend of the Dark Druids or an enemy of the Dark Druids? And you Clearly. get the idea that was an ally of the Dark Druids, mm -hmm. um, and it comes haunching its way up out of the out of the muck. Go ahead and roll initiative. Because I was going to say, could I have Cinderella try and treat with it, signifying oh, the mark on her hand is good. Oh, is it time for Horace to roll? It's time for Horace to roll really high. Okay. Or one of us is getting acided. Here we go. Hey, 22. Um, you get to add your, <laughs> all your stuff. Okay, you guys win initiative. What will you do? I'm casting Wrong. word of command. Okay, so let me just give you a, a, a frame of reference about this monster, just so you understand what, <laughs> you're, what you might be facing. Okay. It's huge. It's like two elephant big huge. And, um, but it's long and slimy. <clears throat> it has four tentacles that waver off of its body. Um, and those tentacles are long, maybe 12 feet long. And that's what had grabbed up Gib and then set him down, uh, leaving him with the vicious um, burns. Burns. Are we close? We're close together, aren't we? You're fairly close together. You're right. fairly near to this creature. You're probably within... I would say 10 feet of it. You know, you sort of backed off maybe a little bit as it sort of comes hunching its way up out of the pond. And it has a big sort of rubbery fish mouth and one big single eye across its 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 forehead, but it's sort of rectangular in shape, oblong in shape. And there are other little tendrils and feelers that sort of flutter around its 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 mouth and face area, kind of like catfish um, feelers. And it has a big swimming tail on its on its back and sort of these sort of ridge fins on its spine but it doesn't have any legs and it's sort of moving like a seal would up out of the out of the water like hunching or kind of so like a cross be between a caterpillar and a seal he's doing the worm mm -hmm. so he might be able to outrun it i don't know well, well I was gonna say, based on its size it's got. based on its size i would suggest we run Personal. Yeah. I... Okay, then I suggest I cast light right into its eyeball because I have a feeling this dim cavern isn't used to sunshine, and that'll at least slow it down for a second um, while we run like fuckers. So that'll put you at half speed, and right, you can't. So you won't be able to run as your second option, or can you run? Because you can, as a, as because you have two actions. Two oh right, actions. yeah, you could use. Um... You you could you could use your second action to move away, whereas everybody could use their two actions to move away, 
Okay. Or you could, or you can move away and then cast your spell, sort of guarding the retreat of your friends as they. That's what I would like to do. To whatever they want to, so you can move where from where the hammy marker is now. You can move um, uh, thirty, whatever your movement rate is, and then cast your spell. Each of those squares is how many feet in this uh, map? Ten feet, I believe. So that's roughly where Gerda gets. Everybody else can be twice as far. Yeah, everybody else can be. Hammy's not leaving far behind Anybody Gerda. Can make a mark on the map where the rest of the party is. Um, Hammy's staying close enough to be able to augment Gerda's role in game speak, but you know he's what's a pal. What, what's Gerda's hit points? Well, twenty-four. She's no Horus. And as long as Hammy can see Gerda, that's fine. And remember, oh well, it is. But he's also slow. He's not as fast as you guys, so he might not, not get that far anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Horace is pretty slow. He'll base Horace will keep at the same pace as Gerda as kind of like a shield, shield man, shield bearer sort of thing. Okay. okay. So we're bringing up the rear. But Sindel is booking it. All right. So she can help Hammy move faster. It will be twenty feet past the the the, the group. <laughs> Sindel is a wild child, so she's moving eighty feet. <laughs> okay, so. Well, here, I'll, I'll let, why don't you guys put some marks on where kind of you think you are on the map? Cindella doesn't have a lot of loyalty to us as a frame because she's fairly new to this group. She's mm -hmm. very new to the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't blame her for running like hell. <laughs> Was that the first game of Mike's? That, that, the very first fight we got into, Aaron's character grabbed something and ran off the board in the first turn. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm out of here. I'm taking this treasure back to the base. <laughs> yeah, that was the best thing you could have done, too. And then, so we're we're running, and Gerd is going to cast light into the thing's eye, right? Is that what mm -hmm. the plan is? Because mm -hmm. I, I have a feeling. I I got the feeling you were hinting that word of command might not be enough to stop this thing. Um, it's a big mother. It's like a, you're saying it's up there with dragons for like magic. I have a feeling it's very magical itself. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, I think I'm just. Um... <sighs> I'm, I want you to understand the the, the immensity, truly... the peril, the the threat that this creature imposes. It's not like dog sized. This is not a skeleton. Yeah, we're get, we're booking, and I'm flashing light in its eye because I have a feeling. Uh, I have a feeling that um, protection from evil while we're running isn't going to help. Mm. That was my other thought. If we're going to stand and fight, I'd cast protection from evil. Okay, just as another thought, guys, the the. The, if this thing is water, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh. If it is water, like abled, it's gonna. We're never gonna get across the the river. Well, though it's it's pretty shallow down there. It's only like waist One deep. One would think, but I suspect it's able to transverse this stuff. Oh, I have I'm no doubt saying. of that. Are you saying we should go for this cavern that we haven't explored yet down here to the south? If we get away. We're gonna have a hard time. We're gonna have to fight it if we're gonna to want to get back to the other side. I, I think you're right. So I think or at the moment, fight, or we fight it now while we have the edge, or we run and fight it another time. Say, so, well, at this point, I don't think we have any specific um, obligation to go back across the river because um, the door we came through isn't there anymore. So. I think there's something in the room of the sarcophagi we we should check out. And there's something about the dais I really wanted Gib to take a look at, just because well, none we of haven't us could opened read up it. that treasure thing. Oh, in the magic chest. Yes. Yeah, we still haven't found a key to that. Now, so are you saying we should stand and fight? I'm not saying necessarily saying that because it sounds like we're going to get our asses kicked. But so in that case, um, I suggest we go down this tunnel that's just past this mystic circle here. Sure. Um, and head for that and see maybe if and, there's somebody. And, and if it pursues us, then at least we'll be have some cover inside yeah. the cave. Maybe it'll slow down yeah. its use of tentacles. It'll be a big space. So let's run. Okay. So running run, towards run. that cavern, I'm casting light and joining you. Or trying to cast light. Sure. Why don't you make your spell check? In the name of Ildhavar, bring down their holy light and blast this fish. There is a plus one spell check in place. So that is a total of, what's it say here on the chat? 18. 
Let's 18. see. Yeah, let me grab my book. I left it I, over on the shelf. I have the um, I have the custom spell for light here. Oh, thank you. Designated point with 100 feet of the caster creates a 20-foot radius sphere of light that remains fixed in the location for a duration of one turn. So a beam of, of sunlight comes piercing through the cavern ceiling and um, strikes the the fish beast in its in its broad eye. Let's see how it does on its save. Yes! It rises on its back and flops into the pool, you know, in this huge splash. Tail lashing and and um, whatnot. Well done. Yes, excellent job, Peter. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dice gods. What will you do on both sides? <laughs> okay, while we have a, a moment, your awesome role. Thank you so much. Both weeks, I've gotten pretty lucky in this adventure with her. She's kind of gotten the right role at the right time. Yes, you, you pulled it off last time. We were all here too, as well. And I and I honestly think that it's your observation of if I intone the goddess and really role play it, it really helps. So I'm I'm really going with that. You're sticking to that. So this was the circle with the busted stones, right? Right. And I and we didn't understand it, but you've got a much higher intelligence, Mister Glass Couch, and you might be able to read it or understand it. I thought you could take a look at it while we have just a moment while this thing's hiding in the freaking water. Or we should, yeah, step like. By the way, I'm leaving the sunlight up for now. It's did like guys, a big did you guys blast here in the, the middle. Circle? Did you guys like walk into here? Or you just threw something into here. No, we I threw something. We just threw a rock into the cave just mm -hmm. to see how far it seemed to go back. Mm -hmm. So you didn't you didn't break the. You didn't no, break we we the didn't circle. We didn't touch the circle. We didn't enter it. We we didn't enter into the cave because we didn't want to cross the okay. circle either. I guess Gibble attempt to understand the runes. And Aaron, just so you know, where I plight, where I cast light, I'm leaving it there as long as I can, is sort of almost like a stay the fuck away from us sort of thing. Sure. Do you want to make a mark on the map? Kind of thing? Yeah, well, I assume it was where the fish was. And I think it was, hold on, freehand, about there. Okay. So that would be a little bigger than that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so there's this radiant sunbeam that's like that's like scorching that area of those weird grasses, mm -hmm. and you all run back to the circle and sort of skidded to a halt. And Gibbs like peering at the ruins. You don't have much time. You're that you know that 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 sunlight will fade in minutes. And so will this thing. Ten, ten minutes. Ten minutes is the duration of that spell. <clears throat> One um, turn. As What's it look like at these ruins? Does uh do they are they at all similar to the rune on Cinderella's hand? Make luck check. Okay. Actually, no, they are not similar. Okay. They're they're dissimilar. Mm, okay. Where the rune on your on your palm is like soft and and swoopy, these runes are all hard edged and angular, choppy. Mm. Mm. East Asian yeah, I, versus Nordic. Yeah, and, and I do. think I think your was it Nils Nils was thinking that they came in, they transported. This is some kind of transportation circle or something, and they transported in and then got eaten by the fish, or somebody came in. But he made it. He laughed about tricking somebody into breaking his circle, and it looks like the circle's broken there. Well, and also that he was given a treat or something. something yeah, around the stones that make up this circle, you can see that one of them is like cracked. And, and so much so that it's sort of separated, like the t stone is like separated off that crack. Um, but that's the only just about Gib, this. So does Gib recognize the runes in any way? Have you made a roll? No, I haven't. Okay, he rolled ahead. a 100. <laughs> hmm. um, no, you don't You don't recognize them. What in the it, hell did I roll? The, you you rolled a three. Up. <laughs> Holy crap, that's some lag. You're like, what runes? 
Well, if we got 10 minutes with that light sitting there, then I suggest we either you can and you can hear the 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 thrashing in the in the pool in the pond behind you. We either check out the cave or and lose our time there or we get back across the river. Well, I think I, the the rest of the stream is is shallow enough that he can't make it up there. So, especially okay. if we go all the way to the far end. Well, you do know that he climbed out onto the land. Yeah, I don't think there's anywhere in this cave sure. he can't actually get to. So I think if we disappear into this cave, he might not know where we are for a while. And if nothing else, um, he tries to come after us. That really narrows his ability to wrap us with tentacles. Yep. Just a thought. Yep. Cave is my vote. Okay, yeah, so you're going to head into the into the um, into the crevice there. It's very narrow. Uh, only you can only go single file here, and and many points you have to sort of squeeze and turn to the side, especially some of the larger of your companions. <coughs> Horace, but, Hanny's but, just walking normal. Yeah, I'm Hanny's loving like, this. Oh, no problem, Suck it, bitches! Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. So. But this little narrow crevice soon expands to a very large cavernous area. He's still wearing the hat, by uh, the way. And it's also lit by that weird phosphorus light. Let me grab some of that for you. Let's see here. I need to be on that layer. And it lights up this this space in that kind of dim luminescence that you see in the rest of the caverns. <clears throat> and this room could have been a barracks or a storage area. There are a few wooden remains and some cracked shelves knocked over uh, around the corners and a couple of uh, what looked to be like rough cots. There is a body in the room face down in the center of the room itself. Mm. Ooh, we find things on bodies. Like germs. Oh, okay, well we should. Does it look check. burnt up like the other ones? Does it look, uh, oh, sorry. Burnt. burnt? It's not burnt, it's... Uh, You said the body's in the middle? Uh, moving it to the right layer. Okay. Shall we approach it cautiously, looking at the ceiling to see if there's a spider waiting to drop on us, like in uh, <laughs> Nevin Pendlebrook? You don't see anything moving in the ceiling. In fact, the ceiling's probably the the, the brightest area about this chamber. And then the, the light source, that, that the weird fungus all across the ceiling, sort of starts to dissipate as it filters down into the gloom. Uh, do you see the body on the map? Yes, you yes, do. I do. Um, New miniature, well done. Yeah, thanks. I painted it last night. <laughs> <laughs> the it detail on this thing is exquisite. Um, it's <laughs> face down, and but it's dressed very differently than the other bodies that you've seen. It doesn't wear black garments. The garments that it are wearing are sort of like a tan, or maybe a dark beige, uh, and they're and its hat is very 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 different it's more like kind of like a pillbox hat and it has on as an as an as an icon or an effigy on the hat there's this big eye like a like an open eye like a ooh, like, like a like, the fish like an eye of sauron out. kind of eye oh sweet these guys know how to dress swapping so, hats and how does it look like he died is it is it apparent from he's standing he's from the, the distance He's at. no, he's drenched. Um, his clothes are are wet and moist. Oh no! And his like, you can see his hands are like up around his neck when he expired. Hmm. Maybe this was the the monster killed him. But how how he got in here? Did we see? That's one of his hands that's like up on his neck, you know, clutching at his neck, and. <clears throat> Um, and his face is kind of this purplish uh, gray color. And you can um, see tucking, 
sticking out from underneath the body in his belt is like a, a bone um, tube cylinder. So the monster did mention that he killed the one with the big eye. Yeah, that's one. right. Again, weren't here, and you got a good, better memory than I do. Well done. Well, yes, he well, did. That's what, that's what Gib was trying to get out more information, but apparently that's not what happened. Well, we got so, got quite a bit, apparently. Enough, but that was in the previous one. Anyways. Well, he did say that he hates all thing, all land walkers. <laughs> and he likes to eat them. Except for yes. little Hammy. Oh, he's well, a hat. <laughs> he's got a fancy hat. <laughs> and he's keeping both hats. Because he has an idea. These might just come in handy. Oh, so yeah. Okay. Of course, since he's got a spear, we'll walk forward and kind of prod the body to make sure nothing make jumps sure, out. Make, it's make sure it's not a zombie. Yeah, it's yeah. quite dead and it hasn't, but it looks like, but it's still quite fresh. Rigor mortis hasn't really set in. Interesting. Well, uh, we okay. found the big oh, eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the footsteps. He came. He came into here. So that monster somehow poisons poisoned him, or drowns him somehow. Yeah, but then yeah. he went. But then he wouldn't have been able to walk in here. So I think he went down to treat with the monster or not, whichever it doesn't matter. But then the monster poisoned him or did something, and he walked in here and died. Uh, so can so can Sindela? That's what I was about to say. Yep. Can Sindela go over and begin inspecting to see if there was a poison used or how he might actually have been killed? And while you're there, get that tube off of him. Or does it look like he's actually surrounded by the same goo that the uh, tree is? Her being an assassin, after all. Well, we solved it all while you were gone. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. I was hoping you'd do, and I wouldn't hear it. <laughs> <clears throat> so does he look like he's been surrounded by the same goo that the tree has? Uh, no, his his clothes are wet. He's just wet. Okay, so like he ahead, like he'd been submerged in the pond. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Sindela's gonna slowly creep over to the body and begin examining it for um any signs of particular poison she might know if he was strangled, what he might have been strangled with, whether it was a tentacle wrapped around, or how okay. he might have died. Okay, sure. Um, make an intelligence check. Okay. Oh yeah, check for those burns. Uh, you can tell that he choked, he suffocated. Okay. Um, you don't see any wounds or um, uh, Ligature marks or anything? Yeah, any, or and even around his around his throat, you know, there's no, like, he wasn't garroted or anything like that. Uh, but he did, but he did choke to death. Well, Mike, you know, once a fortitude we... check, DC twelve. You know, once rigor mortis is set in and the blood's finally settled, then we can see what he was strangled with. Mm. So. Who somebody has to make a fortitude test? Gib, make a fortitude check. DC 12. Don't vomit. I think this is from the tentacles still. So the 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 marks that you have across your torso, your abdomen, and your chest and your shoulder where this thing had had ensnared you. Mm -hmm. Um they start peeling and flaking away and like they break off. And you're like kind of almost picking at it, and your skin is translucent. You can see uh, your organs, your insides, mm. your muscle tissue, your heart beating, <laughs> and um, and it's super super dry. So Slana Shah will slowly walk over and kind of just stand next to Gib, looking. Very interested. Like peering inside him? You only have one heart. So so no. Gib asks uh, <laughs> uh, the priestess to... But I but I don't have any... Uh, so I'm disappearing, but I'm not taking damage. It's like translucent. Like your skin is now made of glass. And it's really tight on those areas along your abdomen and, and very... Mm -hmm. um, 
like you know when your skin gets really dried out and you just move it a little bit and you can feel it like um tensing almost hmm. okay like it's lost its uh rubber band in your elasticity elasticity yeah mm -hmm. that's a good that's so a good i wonder story. if restore vitality would help with this cast this away allows you, this allows you to reattach um severed limbs would have come in handy last adventure <laughs> um <laughs> Um, can restore lost ability scores or healed severed or broken limbs wow. is, is the uh, that's quite description uh, I have here. That's quite impressive. Well, you got to make your roll. Got to have that Deadpool effect going on. That's it. Well, it's a level right, two. Right. So, um, yeah, let's try this. Ooh, it's almost oh, man. News all around. What's this? Wow. What is it? How does it um, manifest? And what is the effect? Let me find the right page here. I only have one desk lamp. Sorry. QRS. NRS. Okay. Um, oh, the, the target is cured, and the mark of the cleric's deity appears as a birthmark or small scar in a place that was previously affected by the ability loss. So you're going to get a small uh, acorn dawn symbol. Um, on one of your on my, wounds, on my, on my on, over zone. your heart, it's like nice a rising a rising sun, but the sun is in an is an is in an effigy of an acorn rather than a than a radiant globe. Worshipped by uh, druids and chipmunks, the world absolutely around. and gorillas. <laughs> don't forget the gorillas. Well, now gorillas, now gorillas, but before this, it was mostly chipmunks. So the description is: it, cleric restores. Gross. At level 27, restores ability score drain, even if it's permanent in nature, and heals 3d6 plus a cleric level lost in hit points, whether caused by spell burn, monster attack, broken limbs, or other means. The spell restores 1d8 plus cleric level points of lost strength, stamina, agility, intelligence, or personality. If the restoration is associated with an injury, the injury is also healed. For example, if the lost strength is from a broken limb or severed hand, that limb is restored to functionality, provided the severed body parts were retained. The ability score cannot be increased higher than the target's original maximum. How freaking cool is that spell? That's pretty amazing. That's a uh, pretty pretty damn wacky cool. So, so what, what I heard out of that spell is hold on to all your body parts. It's right. <laughs> yes, That's right. Exactly. Don't lose Bring anything. Back to Gerda. That's right. Everybody carry one of those blue ice packs. <laughs> um. So over your over your heart, where this mark of Ildevar has appeared, all the other translucence sort of fades away. And you know the elasticity of your skin is is restored, except for there's some slight translucency still over your heart, and your heart beats behind this symbol, kind of almost uh, illuminating it with sort of a reddish, pink glow from the from the um, oh, yes. from the from the subsurface of your of your skin. That is so fucking cool. You're like Tony Stark. Tony Stark, like a shirtless, a shirtless I, I, wizard man. with the, uh, with these iron, oh, it's iron always leaves shirtless. on his on his uh, on his forearms and this yes. weird mark of Ildivar on his chest. Oh, that's he's getting cooler by the minute. <laughs> he really needs a miniature. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I'll see what I can find. Oh, the body just disappeared. Oh, sorry. I control Z it. I'm on a different. Um, it's been eaten. Different layer than you guys. Oh, uh, there's still the body there. Um, we would like to look at this so, um, ivory tube you so mentioned. So now that so 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 now that Gibbs, this looks like this. Okay, how we you know that the thing that happened was there was there um, marks where the tentacles touched him. Oh, on the um, on the on the on the body. Well, yes. Right. So, in other words, was it the same thing? Uh, you do see some of these um, these marks on the body, uh, but there, in fact, you when you tear back his shirt, you can see that his 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 skin is all kind of cracked like that. But the moisture of the of his wet clothes are sort of soaking into it. Mm. So it's like some type of drying spell or something like that, or drying magical drying effect. 
Is that well, what or the, well, the skin cracked and came off of you, and underneath it was the translucence. And I have a feeling maybe that was um, the water that he drowned in was himself. Because he got in here and he drowned. Right, but correct. So there's some type of drying effect. Is my it was what is what Gib is saying. Mm, oh, I see. Absolutely. He was being dried. You know, like the water was leaving his body. Interesting. And this guy got whacked by the monster and came walking into here. Yeah, I think he tried to get back. He tried to get back to his spell circle, but it wasn't working, so he ended up going down the tunnel. Right. Uh, does he have anything on him? Uh, uh, he, has the, he has that um, that tube, that cylinder. Oh, he has a tube or a cylinder. Yeah, it's yeah. Like tucked into his belt. <clears throat> Yeah, that had my attention pretty quickly. I'm guessing it's got a spell that somebody could read. Not me, but somebody. Yeah. Um, Maybe as Sandella's inspecting the body, she'll begin to take a look at this and see if there are any, like, mouths on it that are going to try and eat her if she puts her hand around it or anything. <laughs> oh, um, weird, weird mechanics that, yeah, cause you to get when you pick up the sword exactly uh, okay um looking for fingerprint scanners you know all the fun stuff okay uh go ahead and make a intelligence check let me know okay. how you score beautifully <laughs> well that's everything she does luck check right it's a luck check uh, no, this is an intelligence. There's, there's, yeah. The only thing that you can see on his, on his body is this, um, this, this bone cylinder, sort of ivory cylinder, protruding from his belt, kind of underneath his body now, half sticking out, and that's, that's all that 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 you see. That's all that you you observe. That's all that you care about. Yeah, <laughs> your attention good. is riveted. Yeah, she she's pretty clear that this is important. So she is going to um don't put it in your mouth. Um is it like looped to his belt or something or I tucked it almost. Okay. She'll take um one of her daggers and begin to like pry it out of his um shirt or pants or belt. Okay, like kind of like scoop it out. I guess yeah. You might say. Uh all right. Um, you do you sort of pry it free, and it's this intricately wrought bone. It's not ivory, but bone um, uh, cylinder, and it's capped, um, and it has silver inlay around the edges, the top and the bottom. Hmm. Does it look like human bone or animal bone? It would be pretty. It would be a pretty big human bone. Okay. Perhaps it's animal of some sort, though you can't make it out. Right. Perhaps Whatever it is, it's probably from a thigh. Yeah. What will you do? I will... Uh, it's got like one of those compression tops, you know, a cylinder top that kind of fits over the, the cylinder itself. Okay. Uh, Zendela will try and open it. Does it, it does look magical to Gib? It's not ready to need any magic as Sandella uh, uh, removes the top. And inside you can see a coiled piece of parchment. Ha! Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I will remove the coiled piece of parchment. Mm. On it is written a message in common. And it reads, B. After dispensing with our assessment of the outer defenses, we turn to the main Urn Chapel and become attuned to Azelt. Proceed to assist him with his efforts. I will dispatch someone to relieve you in the regular cycle. Victory is near! Hail Anthraxus! Hesmat. So does this guy look dressed the same as the, the wizard that we made surrender? No, that wizard was different, was dressed differently. 
He was in very kind of ornate black robes with gold trim. But he, he didn't have a, a hat on like... He uh, did not have a hat, no. He hasn't seemed... Those guys don't seem to have matched either of these forces we're dealing with down here. Right. There's two forces exactly. we're fighting down here. Yeah, there's a bunch of groups who want different demons to come out. Yeah, and we're the third group that wants none of them to come out, you pricks. Oh. So what exactly, maybe this isn't the time for it, but we need to think about what, what is our end game here. I mean, if everybody's wanting different things, how do we serve anything? Well, by not letting them summon any damn demons. At least that, that's, that's what Gib would want. I say we stop all of them. Right, though admittedly the issue comes in, how do we prevent them from summoning these demons in the future? Okay, well, anyway. we, we can't. But we'll find out. You never know what we're going to discover as we go here. And, and I don't know. We find a magic up. flute of permanently non-demon summoning. Exactly. You never know. We got a, <clears throat> we've got the um, bagpipes of doom. There is <clears throat> that. There is that. Well, the oboe of doom. <laughs> the oboe of destiny. Oh, man, that would have been a much better follow-up to the Infinity War. Thanos and the oboe of, of uh, <laughs> Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, gentlemen, I think we need to continue exploring because I just do not like that freaking tentacled catfish son of a bitch. No. Nope. There's some stairs to the southeast. That or paper clips. I mean, uh, staples. I'm not sure which it is. Yeah, they're very big staples. <laughs> I've been dealing with well, you know, office supplies all day. All right, I've been in school. <laughs> I don't think Aaron's here. Check his map. I, I, I am here. I'm oh, sorry. Oh no, I didn't say that. I didn't I'm say busy that. Busy fiddling <laughs> with uh, with our impending deaths. With your with your next um, arrival. TPK. TPK. What? I didn't say. <laughs> Is that my outside voice? <laughs> who, who said that? Uh, I'll be just give me one minute here, guys, as I kind of finish this special. No problem. Such a weird tool, this thing. I'll trust you. I just know my end of it. It's all you want. It is funky. It's really funky. At do you, run, do you run games on it? I have. Cool. Right, this will do. This will do. This is. This is good enough. Well, I want to run MCC on it sometime. That would be awesome. <clears throat> cool. uh, hang on a second. I will. I will shortly move you to a new location. Oh, as you're descending God. the stairs, is that right? Is that the plan? Andrew? That is the plan because we don't like the fish. Mm -hmm. Hell with that fish. Fish are friends, not, not food. <laughs> The Finding Nemo generation has spoken. We were going to try to be friends, but it didn't want to be friends. We were, and you were being really civilized, Gib. I was impressed. You were doing, you were doing well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are times for diplomacy and times to run like hell. Absolutely. I mean, we may learn slowly, but we do learn. <laughs> or not. <laughs> so far, we're we're still alive to this week. All right. All right. Now, was this one written by Guy or just published by Guy? Oh, just published by Guy. This was written by somebody that was one of Guy Gax's peers. That's of right. That, of that era. <clears throat> I was just wondering if Guy was listening in again. I am just setting up the lighting layer, and then we will be ready to move to the next location. Dun dun dun. Bam, ba, 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 bam, ba, 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 bam, 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 bam. Which reminds me, I should probably go grab my fresh iced tea. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Actually, what am I talking about? I have a laptop. It's, you're coming with me. Hey guys, we're going in the kitchen. <laughs> you give me a soda. Um. Yes. Actually, I do have a Coke. I even have a Diet Coke, because that's what Heather drinks. Oh. 
God, I'm tired and I have to do it all again tomorrow. Again. Oh, quick question off topic while you're doing a few things there. We have a couple fathers. How was your kids' first days in school? Oh. Because Grace, great. is she a freshman or is she an eighth grader? She's a freshman, but she doesn't start until the 30th. Oh, wow. Wow, that's that's really late. Lucas started yeah. yesterday, the day before. And he's a senior or junior? He's a junior. Yeah, he's a junior. And Emma made it to Tennessee, and she's doing great. She's having a wonderful time. Oh, Often. good. Good. Um, probably everything she ever wanted in college and more. Well, good Often. for her. Yeah. Um, but she doesn't start classes until next week, I think. So she's, oh, so she's got some time to just get doing out of the area. Stuff. Good. Um, and, and having a wonderful time doing that. As it should be. Right. I need to Google an image here. No porn while we play. Yeah, I know. Our children presents, for gosh sakes. Just Mike. <laughs> Housing and <Hammy. laughs> Mm. I'm painting some crates for Walsung, and they've got all these weird mechanical pieces in them. And I just wanted to see how oh, other yeah. people painted them, so what they might be. Mm, gotcha. I just googled random Pegasus designs. See, see, I'm not alone in this. I love Google images. I oh, it's wonderful to... for inspiration. Oh, it really is. I got to figure out how to get a couple computers in my classroom so the students can do it. <sighs> I mean, you could just have them use their phones nowadays. For that. Yeah, well, we have to do that. And then, and we have specific times they're allowed to use the phones in the room because I'm trying to teach them to use them as a tool, not a look at this stupid thing on YouTube or let's play, um, what's the game they're all playing now? They shoot each other. Fortnite? Uh, Fortnite, yeah. God, what's it's that game like? It's, it's capture the flag and you're shooting everybody. Huh. It's basic. no, actually, it's more like Battle Royale. Everybody yeah. appears in this big battlefield and it, and it plays until everybody's dead but one person. Okay. Hungry. If I could hang out with you guys, I would totally it play like it. Is it an augmented reality game where you're playing in this in the space with the players that are around you? Or how does that work? Ethan knows more. You get to do the describing. Uh, I haven't played the game myself. I just know everyone and their mother's playing it right now. Huh. Um, but yeah, the best way I can describe it is Hunger Games with guns. Okay. Yeah, see, you're basically it's like a first-person shooter, and you're and you just all and it's you're playing against whoever signed on at that moment anywhere in the world. Uh, and the game uh, goes on for what, like 10, 15 minutes. It's like an arena game. Yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. And it's all the rage. And I, I just, it's all right. I'm not it's into like that. If I'm gonna free Call of Duty with one mode. <laughs> free Call of Duty with one mode. Okay. Personally, if I'm going to play time, spend time in a video game, I'm going to build a civilization. There you go. I said it. Yeah, there you go. That is my preferred genre. Forex, good old Forex. So, Aaron, John, and I have a goal that at Pacific Con, we're going to set up some really pretty Wolfsung tables. So, even if um, one doesn't play it, whoever's running the miniatures room can go, hey, these guys make me look good. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, next year it'll be me but that's cool all right i am nearly ready gentlemen sorry Excellent. it's taken a few moments to prepare my environment <clears throat> let's see i need to bring hammy down the stairs bum, and bum, unfortunately bum. i'm gonna i i I'm not caught up on my notes. I meant to do some reading last night, but I did the birthday invitation instead. And I meant to do some reading at work, but I didn't only didn't have enough time at lunch to do that. So you, you have to earn a living. To, what? You guys are just going to have to muddle through with me as I do. I have read this portion of the dungeon. I just haven't mark, marked it up with my notes. So what does that mean? That means. 
what will you do? What will you do? <clears throat> Apparently, I just got a, fall, a phone call and voicemail from Baltimore. Okay. I don't know anybody in Baltimore, do I? Okay. Well, only somebody that are a very good friend of yours that wants to sell you something. The only people that are in Baltimore are somebody that wants you to, yeah, that wants you to give them their credit card. Uh, certainly, at this time of night, that would be my guess. This is why I don't answer the phone. Perfect. <laughs> I never Unless answer I my uh, cell phone with, with a number I don't recognize. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You figured that these people would learn that, though. I guess there are people that answer. <clears throat> give them their credit card so yes it it's usually the elderly folk who give um, their credit cards out yeah that is a popular demographic for these thieves have you been getting the calls it's not on the cell phone it was on our, on our landline that said a pretty automated call, sounding call with pretty bad english saying you are under investigation for an IRS fraudulent audit. You oh, are yeah. arrested in, the time. In, yeah. in three days if you don't call us back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Arrested. yeah. I, I get that one regularly. Mm -hmm. Or the good old you missed jury duty. Yeah. <clears throat> I haven't heard that one. Oh, yeah. That's yeah I one. got that one after I'd actually just done jury duty. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't think that's a real phone call. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even answer my landline anymore. I only have it to screen calls and for emergencies. Sometimes I call you, maybe. Maybe. The landline? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You have to leave a message. I almost never answer it. Because I figure anybody I want to talk to has a cell number. Right. I think it was mm -hmm. maybe when you had bad cell reception at the house. That sounds there right. Was a time when that was a thing. Yeah, my first when I first moved in. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All right, I am bringing you to the second level. Bum bum bum. Bum bum what? bum. There's a second level. Bum, bum. First, well, there's stairs. I mean, where do they go, <laughs> go down? Well, I guess that's the second <laughs> level. Go back to the the nice village we just left the, where the the people are and. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because the first level had creatures in it that were so freaking scary, we didn't want to deal with them. I don't even want to think of what the second level's got. Second level takes us back to the jackalopes. Uh, the jackalopes. Interesting. <laughs> Why do you see? Do you see the world? You see the land. Oh, no, you're still on. I'm still on the old screen. You're still on the old screen. Let me bring you to the proper screen. The proper screen. <laughs> there. All right. And hang on just a second, Hammy. You see much too much. You see more than you should see, man child. How's that? You get a glimpse of precog. Wait, what was that? So as you're coming down the stairs, there's this huge flash of fiery light off to the east there. <clears throat> but before you can make complete your descent, the areas plunged into darkness as I fix your settings on the map. On the map. So he's 30 feet, has light, has sight, new distance. Oh, that's why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Don't need that. Oops, I guess I could have kept it. Let me delete this offending image and repurpose it. Hmm. What do you see so far? I felt a ripple in the time space continuum. Wait, what? <laughs> oh man, look at all these new tools they have. 
Yeah, I've been noticing there's so many different little things. Huh. Snaps. What new tools? There's some new tools on the sidebar. Oh, the, the ruler looks different. It doesn't look like a comb anymore. Right, right. It's mm. got a upside down question mark, a rocket, or a comb. Oh, you can show to others, hide from others. Look at so that. Where, where is the, the measuring tape? I don't see it anymore. It's in a circle beneath the magnifying glass. Fourth tool down. Oh, I see. That's what that is. Okay. Under, under the frying pan. <laughs> the frying pan. <laughs> so. Hang on. I'm still trying to fix the problem, the lighting problem, and I don't know. Well, that's it. fine. But when it says snap to center, that means my figure to snap to the center of the square. I think it's the the, 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 the ruler. Oh, the okay. Ruler. Of course. Of course. Uh, maybe global illumination is still turned on. Oh, I see. But that's why that determines what you're measuring from. Right. So there. <laughs> and it plunged into darkness. We thought we knew what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. So not anymore. As you come sort of descending down the stairs, you catch this flash of red fiery light off to the east there. Um, but as quickly as it appeared, it it disappears and plunges this chamber into gloom. Mm. You That's not good. Now, you are now. By the way, I'm using my lantern. I, I, I marked my flask, I assumed. Okay, perfect. Uh, I, I did want to make it official that I have. have had one on for a little while. Go ahead and mark another, uh, a new flask of oil. Okay. And it's probably, you guys have probably been. Yeah, coming on an hour now. So it's now coming on 2 p.m. Your lantern will last you for another four hours to here. <clears throat> it is dark in this in this area. Shall we proceed, and it's gentlemen? A, it's a wide area, a wide open area with smooth features. The rocks and the and the and the stairs leading down are all have soft, smooth edges. Like there's a like, real stench. Like they'd, mm, go ahead. Like they'd been worn by water. Yeah, like they'd been worn by water, and there's a stench of death and decay as you step down the stairs to the final landing, and then you start to notice bodies and equipment. All littered all over every for for wherever your lantern falls, there's some grisly display. Um, as you pause and take all of this in, you can hear a, a distinct sound of chanting. Those are my sound effects, not Nils's. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, <laughs> from which from which direction you can't you discern down? which direction. It's sort of echoing all around this very large open chamber. And it sounds like a bunch of people. It it's hard to say. Make an intelligence check. It's one distinct voice, Gib. Owa Tagu Saya. Those are Nils's sound effects. <laughs> yeah, there's no light here. I think we should stay to the periphery of the room. How about we put the lantern out and let the um and and how many people will we have that have uh you know vision or night vision, dark vision? Night vision? Three three have dark three? vision in your party. The elf, the kith, and the half lane can all see up to 60 feet. And you said that there was already illumination in here, right? There was for a second. We saw there was like a flash of light oh, as you came was, down the stairs. And that right. was kind of the reveal that you had as I was trying to puzzle through why you right. had. I was this. thinking of the room above where we had the, the uh, where the body. The gotcha. Body was, so. gotcha. Right. so yeah, Gibbs going to suggest that we, um, Go to no light, and he's going to cast um, Ekum's mask on himself as well. 
Oh, and that gives you dark vision as well. Yeah. So the only the only two characters that would be plunged into darkness would be Gerda, Gerda, and Cindella and Horace. And Horace. What does the group think about that? I think at least for to get a sense of what's out there, I think that's a good idea. I'm not sure if we want to stay like that. Okay. <clears throat> Would you like? Well, it's, it's a hooded lantern, so we can close it so it doesn't give off life and just open yeah. it. We don't have to light it, might, it again. It might take you an action to get the lantern um, closed, open again. Okay. You know, to 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 reveal enough about you to actually see uh, for no, those that don't have dark vision, and I'm just I'm just. I'm just framing it for you. So if you get surprised by a bunch of monsters, you know what you might be in for. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, how, how at this particular point, since you already said there's all these bodies dead, how do they look like they were killed? Um, like in grisly, gruesome ways, like some of them were like, they're like a couple of wagons, like with broken splinters. And some of the bodies have been like smashed and impaled on these wagons. Some have just been torn limb from limb. Some have been slain by, um, you know, sword blows. Um, mm. Some were at each other's at each other's throats. You know, clawing out their eyes. It's 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 grisly and ghastly. Uh, does like it look like they were fighting each other? So um, then, it... there there was a definitely a fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's it's, it's almost over. uncomfortable to look at. Yep, it's Kingsman all over again. That was a fun movie. Yeah. Okay, this is leaving me just a little queasy. Um, I'm a little concerned about wandering around in the dark. All right, I'm a lot concerned about wandering around in the dark. Um, okay, we can see. Well, okay, I, I, you haven't I'm turned out the lantern yet. Around. I just wanted you to know what what you were in for if you if you if you did right, or what kind of challenge you'd face. Maybe it won't be a challenge, and you know everything will be fine. <laughs> I think that's that's so often the case. <laughs> Why would there be challenge in DCC? I mean, <sighs> all right. Yeah, so no. shall we? Shall we? Shall we at least do an initial exploring without the lantern, just like 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 just like a seventy foot perimeter or even eighty. See foot. what's around and yeah. not really yeah. do a lot of wandering. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's we what we I all stand with hands on each other's shoulders so we know where everybody is. Except for except for um, Slana Shaw, she won't let anybody touch her. Yeah, well, that's her issue. And I've got a light spell ready, and Hammy's ready to open that lantern if he knows that everybody else needs okay. it. Okay, well, let me let me open up the uh, let's let's drop the lantern or turn out the lantern, and let the night vision sort of adjust to the new gloom. <clears throat> You're casting Ekam's mask, is that right, Kim? Mm -hmm. What did you get? Two. So that's that two. Five, six, seven, eight. So that's a total of ten. So I, how's your how's your luck, Hammy? I'm at fifteen right now. We didn't well, use you, any last week. If if you send me one, then I'll have Ekam's mask. Though I don't think it's necessarily necessary for for right. But do you lose yeah. the spell if you don't? Uh, I will lose the spell. No, then I'll, I'll give you this. I will definitely give you the luck because I don't want you to lose the spell. Okay. Thank you. So then, so then, there's four four party members with night vision. Hmm. Problem with painting motorized vehicles that have never existed in reality is you're like, what the hell do I paint this? Chartreuse. Well, it looks like a metallic engine part, but I can't quite tell. It's a mono. It's a monocycle. So giant the, wheel. The night vision slowly creeps into the glooming space, but it's not bright. Ooh. Like. Um, like like your torchlight, so I've I've set it to dim here in, mm -hmm. in the UI. So you have this sort of nice effect of this uh, large open cavern before you. 
Uh, you can see a wall, um, it's kind of a rough cavern wall, but it's but it's that's it's rough and smooth, uh, like we talked about earlier. So so when wherever and whenever we move to a direction, Gibbs, since he was able to discern that it was one voice, he's going to attempt to uh, triangulate from the sound uh, which direction it's coming from. Okay, sure. Um, I think we make, should move towards that rock your, while you're listening. Go ahead and make your move, and go ahead and make a an intelligence check. See so whichever way we're going. I think we should go straight ahead to the east there, to, the, to that rock wall, just to have something to our backs if we have to. Okay. That's why I like being on the peripheral of the room. Plus, it might reduce some of the echo. Why don't you go ahead and make your intelligence check, Gib? Wow. That's pretty darn accurate. <laughs> he's right over there, 72 and a half feet, and he's kneeling down on his left knee. Let's see. He might have a limp in his right leg. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're moving directly towards this. That 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 you can almost feel the waves of of magical energy washing over you with each 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 syllable, each phrase mm. that's being uttered, and it's coming from the from the east. It's and like it's, a ripple effect, like you know, like somebody throwing us a, a yeah. stone in a, in a in a pool of water as these you know these these syllables come washing over you. And what type can Gib discern what type of magic this is? Summoning magic. Nasty oh. magic. <laughs> Let's get in there and stop the summoning quick, guys. So can we see what this is right here? It's like a, f a flickering, like a, like a smoldering, like the light from a smoldering campfire. Uh, and it's like a um, a wall almost, as you see it on your map. Like a wall, like a wall is on fire, or mm, yes, uh huh. Um, let's go towards that voice and waste his ass. We need to stop this summoning. Okay, so it's down. Fun. That's just my humble opinion as down, a priest no, of Eldavar. No, it, it, Gib, Gib would be as a as a representative of the divine order of time and order <laughs> would agree. <laughs> time, order, and time. And order. Or order. <laughs> <Or an> order. <laughs> the divine order of order. That's right. The divine it's, it's another level of order, by the way. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. There are seven layers of order. Yeah. As you guys are having this philosophical discussion and <laughs> making your way up the, the the edge of this chamber. We're moving quietly for the record. As, all right, make a dexterity Trent. check, Hammy. Ooh, really? An agility check for the group. On a, nice. On a D10, because you got Horace clanking around in some armor with you. <laughs> but it's made out of bugs. It's good. Uh, hiding him. You've oh, Horace is not made out of bugs. Uh, Horace has some very special armor. They said agility? Mm -hmm. yeah. On a DC 10. Okay, hold on. Let me double check here. I just want to know who's better, Gert or Hammy. Oh, no, it would definitely be Hammy be because he's he's the one. Oh, that can that's see. right. Gert can't see Gerda shit. Can't. Yeah, yeah. So he's, and in fact, he's like racing around trying to like help both of them. Um, and they are not. No, we're moving slowly but steadily. Yeah. Oh, I, I wanted you to roll a D10, but we'll just take that as a three, oh. which is fine. Um, yeah, they're they're like crashing into each other. They're like, oh, god damn it, Horace. Hopefully the chanting's too to, loud. What happened to holding hands? Yeah, that's <laughs> nobody wants to hold Horace's hand. Zendella <laughs> won't touch him. Uh, so you guys aren't very quiet, but you do sort of make your way up to this um, area and you can see this this wall of of sort of smoldering fire in um, before you, let me quickly skim my notes. Yeah, and it's it's all of these shimmering colors, not just reds and oranges, but there's purples and blues there. So Even it's, it's magical. 
does look yeah it does and it is does look very magical uh quick so, question yeah go ahead Cinderella's uh palm glowing right now can she see her palm um yes in fact your palm okay. is sort of but only faintly like mm -hmm. glowing about the same level as this um this this wall the humans see it as as much kind of much brighter as if they were looking at a campfire of uh, flames but it hasn't disrupted the night vision of the of the demi how, how tall is the wall uh it it it's like a it's like about uh it's about 20 feet tall and oh. 10 feet wide it's sort of like this arching almost I would say circular roughly circular oh i have a handout for you is it is there's nobody standing in front of it waiting to be stabbed in the head no sounds like it's been summoned well, where's this chanting coming from it's it's coming from beyond the portal gib knows it he can feel it oh man are we going through the portal guys uh mm. There's all this other stuff to explore. Yeah. So we think that this is a portal. Well, Aaron just said so. I don't. I wasn't thinking that it was a portal. Well, now that you look at it, it looks exactly like a portal. <laughs> is, that, is that where the direction of the summoning is coming from? That's where the direction of the chanting is coming from. Yes. We've got become very familiar with portals. I just like to use portals. I mean, you know, anything yeah. that you pass through could be a portal. I was about to say, yeah, a portal I'll be, is a I'll be right back with you guys. But we go through a lot of this stuff that shifts us from one world to another, though. Yes, right. we do. This is a Type Three portal. Um, so since so since I since Gib rolled so well, he could he could we could see if he disertains like ascertains, I should say, uh, which how long into the summoning this is. Or, what it, idea. or what it's summoning. I mean, it might be summoning well, bunnies. Yeah. Because uh, that happens uh, all the time. Hey, if it's <laughs> jackalopes, that, I got no problem. Because that's very common. <laughs> yeah, bunny summoning. If that's what I could summon, I mean. Now you never go hungry, and you always have a jacket. It's a jackalope, not a jacket lope. <laughs> so. So. It, it depends on whether or not we're pressed for time or want to deal with whatever's right from in here or you know we might have a surprise i don't know i do have a feeling that we're on a time limit um i have a feeling uh, things are things are rolling because what happened in that cavern looks like that was a big attack that means something else is happening it wasn't just a tit for tat there's point. there's there's something big happening so while we wait how should I ensure Slanishaw's loyalty? Man, that's a tough one. Get to one thing. Of with someone. Get now, no, don't have her carry all the magic for one thing. Slap her a couple times and make her call you daddy. No, that won't work. Damn. Well. Uh, do she might feel some sense of loyalty because we rescued her from that realm of chaos. Well, right, but so she was originally a pledge to um, Ridium. Gorilla, gorilla, gorilla Man. Yeah, Ridium. And then, then she kind of started following around um, the uh, your other elf, right? Well, well more like hanging out. Sorry. Hey, I'm back with you. Sorry, I'm back with you. Yeah. So, um, Gib, Gib's trying to ascertain if this one, if this portal was, looks like it was summoned like relatively soon or recent, or if it's been here for a long time and, or, and to, uh, is he able to tell like, um, how far into the summoning it felt like that this spell was in? Two, two separate things. So, so, so let me make sure I understood your question. You're, you want to know 
how long ago it was summoned and how long it's been in existence. Is, is that right? How, how, okay. Yeah, yeah. How long this portal looks like it's been here for. Mm -hmm. And then two, how long the summoning of the, the words that he heard, the summoning spell that he heard, Oh, has how yes. how long that's been ongoing? Yeah, or how far into choose, it is. You can choose one. Oh, I think you want to know how how far along the ritual is. It seems like it's halfway yeah. there, or whatever. Yeah, that's my thought. Yeah, sure. It, it's it's that one. Okay. How long has the spell been going? How long has the summoning spell been going for? Um, go ahead and and make your intelligence check. Oh, good result. Nice. It's, um, it's been going on for days, this chanting. The, mm. the vibrations the, and, and, the, and the power of the, of the ripples that are being protruded out, it, they've been going on for days. And, and, does it, and does it sound like it's close to the summoning or? Uh, reaching a crescendo? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, n n no, it, it's just like been this steady, this steady like grinding of a wheel in terms of power. Right, yeah, it's yeah, not like right. picking up speed or getting any or getting any 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 mm -hmm. stronger or more powerful. It's just mm -hmm. it's just like this intensity. So it could uh, just be the, the, the like waves of heat, like like wafting right. off of this, um, off of the uh, off of the off of the barrier at, um, at the portal. Yeah, I'm wondering if the summoning is actually keep, is what's keeping this portal active. Like he's actively summoning this portal and having creatures come through. Hmm. There's that chance, or but Gib thinks that this was summoned and they came in here and killed them all, and that guy's. Yeah. Do you get the idea that something was that something is in here that they're trying to summon through the portal? That they're trying to summon something from where we are to where they are, yeah, or we just happen to we overhear need to explore it? this area first. Yeah. Should we get some light back again? Sure. Yeah, since the summoning's not right here, I mean, it's not in the same room with us, I think turning the light back on is a good idea. Let your light shine, Hammy. Let your light shine. Okay, let me... Um, this little light of mine. Let me change the uh, lighting effect that we have going on for Hammy. Oh, he just... Did, did somebody... He just I, got I, I jiggled him as I was selecting him. So he got he closer. Got He's just closer. <laughs> How's um, um Ericor's uh, summoning abilities right now for making people big? Um, well, other than his normal minus three, he's he can embiggenate you. It's why, only minus why, two. Why are you minus three? Because he's wearing armor. Oh, right. But it's only a minus two at the bonus today. So con considering yes. all this, Gib's going to recommend that you try to at least make the warrior grow in size and tank ability for us to explore this area. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. I will. Yeah, because I have a feeling that whatever that thing's trying to summon hasn't left yet. And it looks I like think, it... I think it's trying to summon something else somewhere else, and this is the area that it needed to get to to, to mm. get the, to the portal and then summon this portal portal. And then, so okay. Just then, the portal collapses, and this wow. wind brushes by um, through the party, and then again, and then the and then the flames come back up. And now, did that happen as soon as we had the light come in? Uh, Gib, make a make an intelligence check. Come on, give me some good. Uh, it just it's like this uh, ice cold um that's an 11 yeah it's this ice cold um this this like claw of ice like just clutches your heart for a moment but then it's gone but it's protected by Aracor. 
but it's protected. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Is Gibbs Hart is protected by Ildivar? Yeah, Ildivar. and then you know, there's this warming on the on the rising, uh, the rising acorn of Ildivar, and it's and it's suddenly gone. Mm. Um, did the portal disappear like the instant the light came out, or no. was it like a no, delayed no, thing? No. Okay. So you said the flames came back up. Does that mean the portal reappeared? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it kind it was, of flickered. It was like, like the flames like died down to nothing, and then these these blasts of wind uh, sort of blew through the party, and then the flames like fired up. Um, so like so so yeah. like the wind made the flames. I don't uh -oh. think it was. Do I recognize it as a spirit that moved through us? Mm. That which is unholy to me, that uh, which I may need to turn away from us. Make a make an intelligence check. Yeah, my guess was going to be that something suddenly just came through. I th exactly think so. No, it's not very good. I'm not sure, but I have a gut feeling. Uh, no, but you do see a figure stirring on the on the far side of the portal. And I will give you a glimpse into that space, but then I will close the portal. How will I do that? I will do that by doing this. Are you going to show it to us on the on roll 20 or? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. There appears almost then, like there's a. Yeah, so you like get this this glimpse into the chamber beyond what appears to be a chamber, and uh, and then you see a figure stirring there, but then it's gone. The so it's almost like the portal's like a block, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like a door, like a gate, like a, door. Like a wall. A so fire. you say a figure? Do you mean a humanoid figure or a tentacled mm -hmm. fish figure? Shadowy, a shadowy figure. That's stirring in the, in the darkness. We don't like like Gibbs, spirit. And is Gib able to ascertain uh, the time of when we came down the stairs when the first light came on mm. compared to this? Yeah, somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes. When when we saw the, the being, did it did it um, become aware of us when you saw the figure stirring in the in the darkness. Yeah. I don't know. So this is a this is a barrier probably, and we've either got to wait for it to go and then try to. Would did Gib identify that as the thing making the uh, chant? Well, it's certainly coming from beyond the 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 wall of fire. So yeah, so Gib thinks that that's things in there summoning in here. That's a blockade. That happened. To, that happens to fall down once in a, probably for some reason. How long was the portal down for? Uh, a few seconds. Okay. Like a 1,001, 1,002, 1,000. That wind hits you. 1,003, 1,004. That flyer came back up. Probably not enough time to get everyone across. Actually, definitely not enough time. Why do you think that? Hmm, I don't know. I don't. I actually think it might be just enough time for us to leap through there. But do we want to? Because I have a feeling that thing's imprisoned. No. Okay. I don't know, though. I'm just guessing. Let's explore the rest of the area. I think it's a good idea. I think so. Does Gibbs sense any magic coming off the items or armor of these dead guys, by the way? No. Not to speak no. for Gibb, I just was curious. It's just, no, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's cold as a tomb, you know. It is both, a tomb. Both, both mystically and physically. Um, so I see you moving on to the north. Uh, when you do encounter a new feature, I will describe it to you. I'm skimming notes, so 
just call it out when you see something. Like, Wait, what is this that I see? Is that a baby an dragon egg that I see? <laughs> no, they're stuck in the wall. Eggs. That might actually be better than what we deal with here. I see it looks like a chamber, uh, a hallway going off to the. Ah, yes, there is a there is a uh, a chamber, and it's and it's slanting down, very gradually, but you can see that it does um, slant downwards. I miss my bear. I say we we yep keep on going yep there we go there's get the grand overview and then any detail yep that we might be able to ooh that appears to be a door a uh, door with uh, sorry with a it, actually it's a jar <laughs> that door is a jar because I forgot to um, close it <laughs> to close it with my lighting layer but well I'll fix that problem close it now we can't I didn't see anything. the door could be a jar. Ah, it's transmogrification spell. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Does it have pickles in it? <laughs> or is it empty? Now you guys make me want to go get popsicles because they always had those bad jokes on a stick. Uh, let's see. That is that room. Let's see. You approach this, uh, this door that's slightly ajar. <clears throat> Is it sixty percent a jar or forty percent? It, it's it's only it's a mere forty percent, but there's a huge like bolt, iron bolt that should be set here that isn't. <laughs> on our from side, which side, yeah. From which side? On 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 your side. Oh, interesting. So this is the defensive side. Yeah. Do we want to see what it's defending itself from? How does the so the door opens which way, away or or towards us? It opens. Um, it pulls towards you. And there and there's a bolt that's been unbolted, and the door's a jar. Yeah, thrown back, and that bolt's big. It's like, um, you know, th three four inch diameter. Does it look like uh, the bolt was damaged, or it was just no, just drawn drawn, drawn back. Mm -hmm. So again, that the people that that lay, you know, like fighting each other, do they look different from each other? Is there something to tell? Um, so if you sort of kind of explored a little bit more of this um, this area, uh, make a will check. A what? A will check. A will check about okay. your 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 resilience to like look on these horrors. Yeah, so, I mean, you're none of them died easy. You know, a lot of your companions are sort of like keeping their eyes down on the ground or looking away when they, you know, encounter this new, um, this new gruesome sight. But you look a little more closely, and you can see some of them are wearing black garments, and some are wearing those tan garments. Mm -hmm. So the black garments of the dark druids. Let's call the other guys the tan druids. So we got the dark druids and the tan druids fighting each other. We got something on the other side of this portal chanting. The assumption is it wants to come into where we are. Or release something into where we are because the portal flickered for a moment and some kind of spirit or some kind of nasty thing came zipping through. We don't know what, but we're pretty sure we don't like it. Yep. It's never summoned Mickey Mouse, is it? No. <laughs> and the stairway that we came through didn't look like it was it was defended or it had any type of defense mechanism. Yeah, no kind of like fortifications or anything like that. Again, all the all the stone features down here in this cavernous space are all smooth and soft edged. Mm. That's kind of creepy. I think we just should look through the door because. So I wonder if uh, so. Gib Gib wonders out loud if that circle that was at the beginning of the cave upstairs was um, some type of a, a ward that kept the two places separate. Yeah, it kept whatever was come, whatever might come out of this portal. It kept it in here. 
That's a good, or, that's a or, good thought. Or the other way, that it just kept them separated. These are the two factions. It could be. And or maybe. Yeah. I wonder and, if we went up there now, we'd find more than one of those rocks broken. Like each time this thing flickers, one of those rocks in the circle outside breaks too. I'm wondering if it's the remnants of a broken like teleportation portal or something. I need to keep track. Which is how the other druids got in here. Well, that was our original action. thought. But if there's this portal, then that's another question. But yeah, that's what we thought I don't last think week. That this is a portal. This is a wall. It might look like a portal, and it might be a portal to beam you somewhere else, but but we don't want to go through it. Or you know, portal in my it. description is just is like a gate. Like there's a portal in the in the in the in the side of the castle wall, which allows you to sally forth into the right, right, right beyond. Right. That's that's sure. how I'm using portal. Portal as in an opening or an egress. Correct. Either way, let's uh, proceed. To the door? Sure. I prefer the door to the uh, to the portal, to be honest. So we're going to go through this. Well. I was just say I prefer this portal to that portal. Okay. Uh, righty. So when you put, draw back the door and peer in with your lantern, this is clearly a huge storeroom. It's hmm. um, the, the dimensions on this on the grid are 10 foot squares. So it's 40 by 40, 45 by 45. It's big. And it's strange that it'd be locked from the outside. And it's thoroughly uh, like somebody just tore through here looking for something. There are trunks and boxes and barrels and bags a couple of kegs and they all have just like a variety of items all spewing forth from them um but the lids and have been uh thrown off and the boxes toppled items are just strewn here and there some are food some are clothing some are just old books and papers but it's like um it's like jam-packed in here um are there any bodies on the floor like in the other room no there are no bodies Can we mm. gather some food for ourselves, or is it all bad? Uh, you could certainly s look for some food. I, I mean, you know, you assume that there might be some here, but it's like, oh. I you don't just, know if you've I ever you seen, like, food. Um, you, you see, like, what looks like food, but it's like, mm. you're, I mean, you know, there's a knocked over cask of beer, and, but think about that, like, every, Square it's all mixed up. This place has has you know some sort of container, shelf, box. It's like a kid's room that that hasn't been cleaned all year, like just fucking destroyed. You see a little bit of cheese, like kind of nearby. Gib, you could collect that if you want. Okay. It doesn't too. It doesn't look too moldy. In fact, it's kind of hard and maybe sharp. Mm, make a nice salad of that. Gib, Gib, Gib likes sharp cheese. But okay, you know, we go? you know, if you were to start digging into all of this, it would it would take a significant amount of time for to, no real return. To well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it would. You'd have to kind of work your way into it, and then I say, then we, which way from yeah, there? Continue and, you know, on. Go to the south. I do too. I want to see if there's any. Anything, make sure we've just made sure we didn't miss a, mm -hmm. oh, look, here's a door in the corner type thing. Ah, right. Yeah. Shine your lantern. Exactly. I have a feeling that whoever was looking for something didn't find it. That is a general rule of thumb with destroyed rooms so you don't want to you don't want to spend any time searching it is that what you're telling me not yet okay. no I, I don't doesn't think so okay um, this is another one of those slanting thing? down uh, oh. tunnels okay I don't want to go down them yet what do you guys think and about not where yet. about where your lantern ends there at the edge you can see it makes like this hard 
jog, and that's and and you can't. That's, you that's, can that's why your lantern doesn't sh shine any further. Mm -hmm. Ah, look at this. Another burning wall. Ah, yes. Or, this or one wall. is very similar to the one that you saw on the opposite side of the chamber. But this one is uh, flickers in and out of it of its existence, like fluttering. Like... And we feel the wind when it flutters, flickers away? No, you don't feel any wind, but you do feel heat rating off it. Can we and see anything within it as it flickers? Or past it? Um, you haven't quite caught in a glimpse past it. Somebody making a drink? Um, Nils might be. I think Nils is making a Manhattan. I'm not doing anything. It's Ethan. All right. I blame Ethan. No. Okay, Mike. I well, I mean everything, but like. No, that's not me. I'm not making that sound. <laughs> what was what was the sound? Like a shaking sound. Yeah, oh, it sounds like some. Yeah, yep. like that. That's, yeah, that sounds exactly like it. <laughs> All right. What is that sound? That was the sound of me trying to settle a bunch of figures down into a plastic bag. Ah. Oh. I would have never have guessed. <laughs> here, here, I thought it was a cocktail. Damn that sound. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so since we're sitting here watching this, can can we see behind it? Flickering? Is it flickering? Sure, give me just a minute while I see what you see behind it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And you see your own death. I hate it when you and see that. And you see what I see. So this morning I was one of the first teachers who came in and got my coffee going and everything and put my music on, was doing some stuff on the computer. Another teacher comes in, right as uh, Foo Fighters in your honor is cranked, <laughs> just cranked in my room. Um, it was it was a good way to start the morning. Should have played Beastie Boys Sabotage. Uh, that's another regular of mine. I like that one a lot. But boy, I was really in the mood for Foo Fighters this morning. I just love me some Dave Grohl. He is pretty talented. He's amazing. And, and he's just a, a consummate professional. I've never seen him. I hear he's wonderful live. And you hear the story about him breaking his thigh in concert, goes to the hospital, gets it set, then comes back and finishes the show. Huh. That's, just, that's just pro, man. That's pro. I upset a lot of people when I say I think Foo Fighters is a better band than Nirvana. Uh, there, there could be some, yeah. There, I mean, that's not too. Well, my main argument is Nirvana never had the time to really grow and become more than what they started out as. Right. You know, Cobain's premature death, however you see it, it ended any chance of them growing to be more. And say what you want, good or bad, about Pearl Jam, they've certainly grown and evolved and done different things. Right. Yours is mine and mine is yours. Okay, sorry. I skimmed ahead to figure out what the heck's going on down here. <clears throat> well, as long as you're as confused as we are, we'll be okay. I had a question about um, if you could see anything beyond the, the chamber mm -hmm. when uh, when the uh, when the wall exactly. came down. Or when and, it flickers out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You do, you do see um, into the chamber itself, and but it's there's inky darkness uh, beyond, and your lantern light is just swallowed up by that that darkness. But you can see it opening into an into another chamber, and then the and then the the flames rise up again. How similar the, is it to the chamber we saw in the other one? Uh, similar in terms of darkness, though you, it, it not quite as inky. The uh, first one was not quite as inky black. Okay. <clears throat> so can Ildervar um, cast a light at the point where she sees? 
I might be able to. I mean, it says at a you know point where you're directed, I might be close enough. Sure. Um, you guys can wait for the the barrier to fall. It 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 seems to be falling in roughly somewhere between three and five minutes, whereas the okay. other barrier didn't fall um, for like um, ten to ten twenty to minutes. Oh, okay, so this thing's not blinking like in seconds. It's blinking in minutes. It's oh, okay. And when it falls down, it stays down a little bit longer, maybe for an eight count instead of a four count. Okay. Let's see. So you're going to wait here and then try to, and then cast the light spell. An attempt to cast light there. Okay. Um, you, you do. Uh, it happens. Oh, but make your spell check for me. It happens. <laughs> and there was light. I'm just going to move you in quickly. Okay. So we can see. So you can sort of see. This is about what you can see as a result of your light spell. And it's an altar like we saw out yeah. in the mushrooms. It is, It is in fact, different <clears throat> It's uh, than, the, than the type of altar that you saw by the mushrooms. I have a handout for you, but I won't um, give it until we go in. I I won't give it to you because I haven't photographed it <laughs> <laughs> and uploaded it. I could if you like, but it's 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 cube like in its shape, and this altar is mm -hmm. this cube. It's maybe not even an altar. It's just this big black cube, and it's like four feet square, and you can see these uh, these these veins, these sort of pale green veins running through this black stone. Do we want to wait for the thing to fall again and go in there? Group? Is there anybody? You could jump like across now if you wanted to. Three, I think we should. Let's two. We do. One. No. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're there. All right. So you you leap across the um, the the threshold and the flames rise above you, behind you. And before you sit, this squat black cube. Uh, does Woody, I mean, Gib detect magic on it or anything like that? Um, it doesn't feel particularly magical. Why don't you throw a d20 for me? Intelligence check. Yeah, no, you're not getting any sense of any any magic you do get a sense of magic of, about the uh the firewalls that, that'd be a 14. Mm -hmm. right. yeah not not good enough to discern anything about its true function right. or meaning and so it is said. it it's it's darn peculiar though it's all it's all hard-edged with these you know sharp um edges and corners and this, and it's veined. It's this, it's this black stone with these pale green veins running through it. Does it look like it's moving or pulsating or? Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not. Um, it looks like it's stone, though. It looks like an an immobile object, an immovable force, mm. like some sort of really fancy mineral. So Gib will throw a. a copper at it and throw it going at it ping it sticks to it Thunk. oh interesting like it's magnetic like it could be but i don't know if that's um ferrous material or not no copper, really. is, not Cop copper is not normally so but it was copper that was thrown at it all right but it's still stuck to the it's stuck. It's a magical yeah. magnetism, right? Did it look like it was it was uh, drawn to it, or at the time that it was thrown, or does did it look like it just stuck to it because it was sticky? <clears throat> Do you want to get closer to it? Well, no, that was just something that it, you would somewhat observe if when you were to throw Give something at something. Light. Make a luck check, Gib. Well, remember that we've got. The other light in there as well, but okay. It's dim. It's, it's not fire. Very, it's not very. It's not very bright. That's pretty good for luck check. Um, yeah, it 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 like 
it it was like you were sort of threw it at the um at the at the altar like it was going to at this at the cube like it was going to land on the top but then it got sucked down to the face mm. drawn to the face the surface the front the, the side the cube the, the front side. side of the cube yes. that you're standing and looking at with its hammy being a representation of your party's position Hmm. Does it, um, now that we're looking at it more, does it look like it's made out of different parts? As no, in it's a complete, it's one, it's one seamless, seamless cube. Seam, seamless cube. Four, but four foot square, perfectly square. So Gib's going to, um, lay down on it, lay down on it, Gib. <laughs> <laughs> Gib is not going to lay down on it. In fact, he's going to stay the exact distance that they are right now. Uh -huh. Let's circle it to the side. Going south side first. I'm no fool, no siree. Are you going to move around it? I am. Okay. Gib, Gib is. Yeah, it's, it's um, no, it has no no separate features. He's not going to go behind it because that'll make it too close. Okay, yeah, but you see no discernible features, markings, and then, then, he, then he takes another copper and throws it at the back. So when he's right here, uh, it does much the same thing. The, but you can on see the, the back. two coins, and when you're looking at it on the back side, you can see it's sort of maybe uh, it's not quite the the, the coins not quite. Uh, on the first first surface of the uh, of the of the black block, it's there. There's like maybe a quarter inch gap, a third of an inch gap. Almost like some sort of magical barrier. Possibly. Okay. Possibly so, a barrier. So, in other words, the coin is not actually adhering to the block. to the it's face like... of the block. Correct. Say that again. It's not affixed to the face of the block. It's actually floating a little above it. Yeah, like oh, you know, okay. like when you try to put two magnets together and yeah, you get yeah, that right. sort it's of telling it now, yeah. but it's still kind of just stuck to it. Um, mm. I'm gonna you see try to pick this. it up. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you're gonna your, wait, you're gonna here. put your hand in the hole. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you're gonna jump up on it with and put your belly against it. All right. No. Rub around on it. Naked. <laughs> so I'm going to suggest we have Arcor with his spear slowly move the spear forward until he can start feeling a pull or some sort of thing to see if there's at what point we actually uh, there's an effect. Well, uh, yes, I've, <laughs> you can really do this, but if it just seems like what is I mean? What's the purpose of interacting with this thing? There's, it's not seeming to do anything other than stick to stick things. At this point, but, since but we, there's nothing in here, we just move on. Solve this problem, and this seems to be probably part of the problem. Yeah, all we're trying to discern is what we're dealing with right now. I think. I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Okay. I just want to get a general area of effect that this thing is happening. If if our right. court does not want to do that with the spear, that's perfectly so. So so just to kind of recap about this black cube, <clears throat> it's not mat. You're not getting a strong sense of magic off of it, though there is some sort of physical Force. effect when you tried to Force interact with around, it. Right. Um, and and the and the coins, the the magical the the wall of fire behind you is much more magical than the than this this black block before you um, and there's, everything else about this room is featureless there's no dead bodies or nothing no dead bodies or nothing um just a minute let me check a few things here it's a time yeah. dilation field nobody tells me nothing I like it that way it makes things easier that's it <sighs> But it could just be a special property of whatever mineral this altar is made out of that it's creating this effect. Absolutely. Yeah, without a doubt. That's a yes. 
Um, okay. And I'm looking. I'm looking. Okay. So you you could long, make yourself. How long ready. is the elbow? Uh, it's five feet. Okay. In so length. Eric Eric is going to uh, take the oboe from Slana Shah and use that to kind of poke at it. <laughs> You're using your magical item to <laughs> to fiddle with this block. Is that? Is that <laughs> <laughs> GM gears running. How can I get rid of this overpowered item from my party? Oh, oh! Look at, what do you know? Look what they just asked to do. Or how can how can I get it out of her hands? Um, without actually, let me. I just well, I just don't want to like be without a weapon. Um, okay, now he'll use a spear, the wooden end of a spear. Oh, the wooden end. Okay. Yeah, to kind of. Like a, a, as uh, Ethan suggested, move it slowly closer. See if there's any tugging on it. As soon as there's a tugging back off, feel how strong the tugging is to make sure it doesn't. There is like, no tugging on. There's no tugging on your spear, Ericor. <laughs> Nobody's tugged on your spear for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, he is an elf, so. Um, <laughs> so he could be. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Slana Shah is definitely not interested in the spear anymore. So, uh, so it does seem to be um, metal, maybe metal. Um, you know, well, you got to you got to you got to poke at it with uh, your spear. With the... I'm not sure I want to poke my. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, he'll turn it around and try his metal the the metal end of it. And see if he if he notices any difference with the metal end. Being careful when he gets to not have it jerked so, out of his hand. So does a does a does a bow or does an does the arrow to in the bows that we buy are those metal tipped? Yeah, they're 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 iron tipped arrows. So or Gib steel. will take out one of his one of his arrows and and. Slowly walk towards the. Uh... Oh, there is a tugging on your arrow, Gib. From maybe three feet away. And... So the question is, who do we need to try and he'll back. lure in here? What what does the arrow do when I let go? Oh, it it sort of it sort of jumps out of your hand, but it it falls to the ground. Mm. And it does definitely seem to be... some sort of exponentially powerful magnetic field or attraction field. Um, possibly a mix of gravitational and so magnetic. What are these two? Time. What are these two dots on the top of it? Are those like, it's just a map notation to say that it's, it's like this. Okay. It's a it's featureless it's a feature. on the top. Yeah, it's just a it's just a it's just an artifact of the map notation. So Gib will Gib will uh, take all the metal things that he's got on him and hand them to uh, whoever feels like holding them. So those mat those heavy iron bracer or greaves that you have the on your greaves arms, is, is your money. sword, your coin. I'll hold on to him and get him all right back to him. All right. So you're kind of shirtless and just in your in your skivvies. And, okay. Yeah. yeah he's so the no, sexy so, guy. He's the sexy guy in our party walking so, around looking like Anthony Kiedis. Yeah. Like, like, some, like the cover of some Harlequin novel. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and we'll we'll approach it. We'll approach okay. the um. Sure. So you can you. How close do you want to get to it? Uh, like within like five feet, four feet. Uh, you are probably even a little bit closer to it with your arrow. Okay. 
you got to about than that. feet when you could feel it start to tugging at it, and you let go of it, and it sort of jumped out of your hand and then fell to the floor. Mm -hmm. So now, so now he's going to get close enough to observe what the what the coins are doing. Mm -hmm. So he'll he'll get really up close to it, not touching it though yet. Sure. So they're just sort of there on the face of the the one that you're that's on the east side of the block is just the, sort of there on the face. You can see this light gap. It's not quite touching the the block mm -hmm. itself. On the east side, on the and on the uh, west side, it's definitely stuck. On the west side, it's also doing the same. Oh, it's 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 like a quarter inch away from it. Yeah, maybe a third of an inch, an eighth of an inch. Interesting. Maybe it's I'm moving. Not you. you know, I'm not touching you. <laughs> uh, he'll he'll reach back and break the. Uh, steel tip off of the uh arrow okay and, and poke at poke at the thing with the with the wooden shaft are you trying to move the coin yeah and, okay, and yeah. also poke at the uh the box the uh, cube whatever. it's it's cube. solid it's stone um you can move the coin a little bit in fact plink you sort of flick it away and it, or you move it enough and it breaks whatever Bond, bond it had, and it the coin sort of clatters to the floor. Hmm. And all all else is featureless. There's nothing else doing. So now he's going to go completely around the block, looking for. I'm sorry. What were you doing? He's going to uh, examine all around the block, going behind it as well. Sure. So it's as much as you've it's observed all the same before. Thing. Yep. Uh, it's now, you guys have been down in this level for about an hour now. Any other ideas, guys? And then we'll continue on. If, if no, I'm kind of, can, I'm kind of uh, feeling befuddled here. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling this is one of those things where we're going to go, hey, wait a minute. Oh, well, later. Yeah, yeah like we did with the uh, like we did with the uh, monkey flute stuff. Yeah, we probably got to put some special object on the altar or something like that. Right. Yep. Okay, so we're going to wait for the flames to uh, to lower. Okay, and then pass through. Sure. It's pretty easy. It's pretty flames simple lower. process. I like him pointing ahead. Go this way. He's over there. Otherwise, I, I feel like we're going to get snuck up on. Hmm. Is this another one of those descending tunnels? Yes, descending tunnel of smooth, uh, of a smooth nature. Smooth. With a capital oh. smooth. Uh oh, here's another room. Uh, here you can see a door. Um, it's very similar to the door that you saw north of you, an iron bounded door. But this one has its bolt is, is slammed uh, hull, uh, barring barring exit from whatever's on the on the far side. The door pulls towards you, and beside the door on one side you see a barrel with a lid atop it. And then on the on the opposite side of the door is a small wooden box with sort of like a rag thrown over the top of it. Very inconspicuous. Go ahead and pick it on up. I'm not putting my hand in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I learn I slowly, but I learn. Does Cindella want to take a peek at the box? Um I it's, can a rough, a it's a rough wooden box. It's about it's like the size of a bread box. <laughs> is it bigger than a bread box or smaller than the size of a bread box? Uh, it's open topped. Um, it's very kind of rough and kind of shoddy sort of construction. Um, banged up, marred, and, and edged. There's sort of a rag sort of thrown over the top of it. 
the barrel on, on the opposite side is moist. You can see moisture sort of leaching through it. And there's a kind of a, a lid on top of the on top of the barrel, like a, a wooden barrel lid. So the one with the rag about, how tall is it? Um, it's uh, less than a foot tall. Okay. It's like the size of a bread box, right? Do you even yeah. know what a bread box is? Boy. No. <laughs> Well, technically, none of us really should either, since they weren't really using it much when we were growing yes. up. It's about the size of a toaster oven. That's what they used to uh, store uh, bread in. Right. <clears throat> they um, store bread in it when they didn't have plastic or waxed bags. You didn't. Your family didn't have a bread box. I don't think so. No, mine didn't. I guess mine didn't either. The only reason I know what they are is one of my friends' families did. Mm. Mm. Okay, so Sindela, at the suggestion of our wizarding friend, uh, will unsheath one of her rapiers and kind of like just stab down. Oh, stab into it. Just just a light stab. A light stabbing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, a gentle stabbing. Like point point down to, uh, like to go through the rag. Okay. Or how far into the box do you wish to... Not very far. Your weapon, maybe about halfway down. Oh, okay. Uh, you, yeah. So you you sort of give it a little poke, and mm -hmm. the the blade parts the rag, and you hit, and it and it's and it skewers something soft beneath the rag. Oh, um, you killed a kitten now around your. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, weapon, but it's sort of fallen in and folded into the interior of the box. You can't see what's in there. I will go ahead and. Uh, pull my rapier out and trying to keep whatever I skewered still on the rapier. There's a on the end of your blade is a is a it's like a biscuit, like a hard tack biscuit, and it sort of breaks and crumbles away. Much better than a kitten. I was gonna say, if it's a kitten, there's gonna oh. be some first aid involved. That's right. <laughs> Get the cleric. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I befriend animals. We know that. Yep. And Zendela is still kind of like bitter at not getting the other cat to follow her around. So, so does it look like the bolt to the door can be opened? Yeah, it does look like it can be drawn back. Doesn't look rusted or in bad shape or broken. No, it looks relatively well used. And Gib's going to give a sniff of the barrel without touching it. Um, it smells a little sharp, kind of maybe faintly of urine. Mm. Ah, the latrine. Like ammonia? Only faintly. But it looks like the way that it's 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 weeping liquid that it's full. Um, it's certain there's certainly liquid inside of it. And it's been there a long time because it's but generally through. when a barrel is like uh, you know weeping, you can generally see the general state of the level of it. Sure, yeah, it's maybe half full, maybe a little half more full. than half full. And the uh, and the top to it, um, is it solid or is there a hole in it? Uh, no, it's solid. It's like kind of like a plank top. Like it might know. be the pickling jar. Or it's the piss bucket, but I think it's the pickling <laughs> jar. Yeah, but pickle, pickle, pickle usually smells a lot different than piss. But it could just be really bad pickles. Shall, shall well, we unlock the door? If you've been there for a while. Yeah, it, we should definitely go in the door. Yeah, but that's the one thing yeah. is that pickles definitely last a long time. That's why they did it back in the day with the fermented pickles. Uh -huh. <clears throat> they last for months. Months and months and months. And a sandwich isn't the same without a dill pickle. In fact, that's what fed a lot of uh, Napoleon's armies was pickles. Anyways, shall we open the door? Yes. Okay, you door. throw back the bolt. Punk, and uh, mm. the room. That was yeah. a pretty good door sound. Thank you. Mm-hmm. On the far wall, you can see. Wait, what's that? Men in shackles chained to the wall. Three of them, figures, they barely even move. Are they wearing tan or black or both? 
Um, <laughs> or, or neither. You, you can't tell. Hang on, I'm trying to get this stupid thing to work. Or are they all wearing one of the fur faces? That's a popular trend. They're all in orange jumpsuits. They're all in Snuggies. Onesies, I think. What do they call those? One of them the stirs, stirs a little bit, but they don't they don't really move. You can tell they're all alive. Okay, can we I say the priestess tries to heal one of them at least. Well, yeah. Some, so that we can get some damn answers out of this whole thing instead of some big fish trying to attack us. Well, let's keep an eye on things because something's been guarding this, and I think that's what this area outside here is. Whoever guards these guys, sure. so we want to be careful they don't come back. But I think we should definitely well, go in there and, yeah. and heal some guys. I think everybody, you know. Okay, what do you do? Well, we plan to enter um, while well, watching to make sure whoever left the biscuits and the and the barrel full of piss out here doesn't come back. Because I so get the gun. Two of you are watching the door. Yeah. Yeah. And and one or more of you are approaching the. You can tell they are men, male. Well, Gerd is approaching them to um. As you get to be about five feet away, like one of them, the one in the middle lunges forward, it, and it just smells foul in here, like sharp, you know, like nobody's bathed in in weeks and he like lunges at you Arr! and the shackles like y almost yank him off his feet he's like Arr! and the other two beside him like just kind of like they're super they're like look like they've been starving uh the the two on either side and they're like just skin and bones and they kind of their head sort of loll and their eye kind of barely opens and but the other one like like shakes his head and looks at you and he says, Gods be saved! Release me! I am Fenloth! The agent of the Brothers of Sion! Grrr. Oh, there we Training go. At the, Aren't those the guys at who hired the, us? At the the hired us. Yeah. yeah, they asked us to go do this. Hmm. And I think we'll end we'll end for the night here. No, <laughs> fifteen minutes. That's 15 a perfect. Minutes. That's like a Stanley ending. That's Jesus wonderful. Man. Crickety Christ. <laughs> oh, I love Crickety it. <laughs> so, most important question: What kind of hats are they wearing? They aren't wearing any hats. They're just in tattered rags. Yeah, it sounds well, like that means they're the good guys. So. <laughs> cool. Well, my plan next Thursday, is to cast Restore Vitality on these guys and see if we can't save and them. And as soon as we do that, then the monster's going to come out of the other area. I'm, I'm guessing probably. Probably. As soon as we do that, that the two other guys are going to have like this parasitic creature come out of them. Mm, wow, what food for thought are you guys are giving me? <laughs> You've already got the module. They're not... This is. You know, he's been watching Alien, obviously. <laughs> Start going. <laughs> well, Nils, I have a very important <clears throat> question for you. What will you Sorry, do? Sorry, I'm already married. What will you do to ensure the loyalty of Salon Nagash? Full well, frontal I'll lobotomy. Sure you, um, I'll make sure start. I'll start to make sure that you uh, that you pronounce her name correctly. Mm -hmm. Salon Shaw. Yes, well, it's not my fault you gave her a complicated Kithian name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, speaking of Kith, did you you had a look at the article? What did you think? I haven't even seen it. Um, it looked, yeah, the, the they did an incredible job on the the entry art piece they did. Yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I read you know I've, I've read the the article that you'd sent sent in, so I was already familiar with the the text of it, but it was very well done and the and very well presented, and they have nice, you know, they've got like about six or eight new classes. Um, and each one had the, the, the little advancement chart has nice little table layout. Oh, um, cool. So, so yeah, it was the, uh, um, actually the, your potions has got, has, um, two different pieces of art with it. Mm. Um, but, but they're a little bit smaller, but, um, still very, very well done. And, 
I have seen the one piece of art, like the guy with the cloak and the and the potions inside the cloak, but I didn't. I haven't seen any other stuff. Oh, yeah, there's on. one at the end of the article. It's like half a page, half a page piece. Oh, awesome, pretty cool. Awesome, fun. Well, by the way, he, I meant to say props and getting some publishing there. By well, the way. Uh, yeah. thank you, thank you for that. That's my first officially published piece of Game gaming material, and and it's a twofer. And there's two, and I have to thank Ethan again for um, contributing to the Kith article. You did a lot to help flesh that out, and I did give you um, writer credit on it, buddy. So thank, thanks again for that. Thank you. Uh, that's all in the Gong Farmer Almanac. If you want to see it, Mike, I can send you a link to the free PDFs that you can download. Um, sure. I'll be getting a print version of it eventually when they release that file. Hey, and by the way, congratulations to Ethan to graduating to full member of uh, the DOTD. mailing group. Yeah, our yes. mailing group. Yeah, right. Now, <laughs> now you are a man. <laughs> that's got a long, that, that mailing group's got a long and storied history. Yeah. Yeah, that's for well, sure. it's coming up on eleven years now. Is it eleven years? Wow! Wow! I think wasn't wasn't last year ten years? Might was, have been. I don't remember. I think you're better at keeping track of that stuff than I am. Certainly better than I am. And uh, Peter was reminding me how you uh, quite often took over the campaigns that I run out of energy running, <laughs> like the um, the denizens of the deep and the right and the and the uh, war master one. Well, I can't remember oh, one no. of them. But one of them was, I think, it was Brian took over uh, on the War Master. I thought. Oh, maybe, maybe. But one of them was you had some crisis going on in your life that made perfect sense to hand it off to someone else. Probably getting divorced or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've all been there. Um, I'm I'm way off. It's been 14 years. Wow, 14 years. Mm. So it actually started before my when divorce. That, what year did that start then? 14 2004. Years. 2004. Oh, my God. So when I cleaned out the garage, I got rid of a lot of stuff. And I had a lot of old gaming stuff that I just saved. And I looked at, you know, there's a lot of them. Like, there's no point in saving it. And I pulled out. I found um, my Warhammer Fantasy role play stuff that Dave Georgeson had run. And I threw all that out. Mm -hmm. Saved the stuff that John had run because that was a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. But I found my Denizens of the Deep three ring binder with all the maps and some of the stories we kept. And I want to go through it and look at it and see if I can't put together some sort of dwarven history. Because oh, fun! That was two years of some hardcore gaming, and then we did War Master, and I ran my dwarves in that. So. Yeah. So you have this like overall theme this arc right yeah in fact that's one thing i mentioned in my post was that uh you know it doesn't matter what system i play now if it's war master or now kings of war turl Erkdranger and and zender rockfist they will be leading my forces right because they do <laughs> that's right those named characters came about in that underground campaign and they just you know especially ryan and i we loved writing those stories about because only the winner, got, Ethan, I don't know if you know about it, but only the winner got to write the battle report. Oh, okay. so, right. Yeah, and some people wrote very straightforward battle reports, like this is what happened. But um, Ryan and I played all the time. We only lived 10 minutes apart, and he owns pretty much every army in the game. And so if there were proxy battles, he and I would often play those too. Right. But boy, we both had a good time writing those stories. They became very flavorful. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun, and that was the the genesis of our of our mailing list 14 years ago, Ethan. So welcome to the welcome to the club. Right. Uh, only a select few are chosen to join. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, so, how about some hits or misses for tonight? Why don't we start with um, Nils, Arcor, and Sla Nisha? Nicely right done. Nice. <laughs> um. Getting away from the giant catfish is a good a good hit. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to figure out, uh, um, and then uh, getting the exploring in. Um, I, again, it's one of those ones where we just we had no combat. We just had a lot of exploring, which is is good and bad. So you know, sometimes it's fun for the combat. Sometimes it's good for the exploring. So, right, right, right. That's um, all my points too. <laughs> Okay. Well, we're about, all still we're all still alive yet yeah, how about for horace and Cindella for um i was just happy about all the little puzzles that we have 
that we're dealing with, um, with the altars and the portals and things. Um, I don't think I have any particular misses. I thought it was just an all-around fun session and fun to get back into the swing of things. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to join us this week. Peter, Gerda, and Hammy. I'm with Nils. I'm not blowing my own horn, but boy, what a hit that we avoided um, what could have been a really nasty combat. And I and I am proud of the fact we're able to avoid a lot of combats, to be quite honest. Ever since that Dungeon of Dragora, uh, I'm like, let's Let's think about. It. Do we need to fight? <laughs> how do yeah. we get? How do we get out of the mess? Yeah, yeah. Especially I just, since we don't have an eternal champion. Yeah, no kidding. We need to summon one of those guys. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of hits, and being the first day of school, I was looking forward to this all day. And uh, boy, it was a really mm. big, big hit actually to me. Is that our, the whole core group was here? So it was nice having everybody right. aboard. Right. Absolutely. I definitely agree. Um, Mike, it sounded like f for Gibb, you had kind of some of some of the same stuff that the other guys were, were saying earlier, right? Yep. Cool. cool. Yeah, the only miss I have is that we just didn't quite get information yet. <laughs> I'm with Mike like, oh, tell us! Don't die yet! <laughs> what do you mean continued next month? <laughs> what do you mean stay tuned? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, they same time, same channel. You know, Perfect. It's like a Netflix me, series. He <laughs> was the encounter with the beast at the pond. I, I had a lot of fun with that at the end of last week's session and at the beginning of this week's. So that was, that was, it was yeah, it was definitely fun both times. Um, and the miss would be not being as prepared as I would have liked to have been for the session, you know, with my notes and mm -hmm. having the maps ready and having to kind of fumble through some of that. But, you know, maybe next week. <laughs> I thought it was largely seamless. There yeah. was a brief pause there, but that was fine. Yeah. And we had a whole new map to go through and a new lighting technique that was really cool. Yeah, that was fun yeah, doing the, the dark vision. The with definitely... not, like super bright, but unnecessary, but a lot of fun. Great idea, Mike. Yeah. Well, fun, guys. That was a it was a great session. I needed to sort of Ooh. recharge my batteries after a tough tough week at work so i can go into my yep. friday and into my weekend feeling pretty good um Excellent. is there anybody that wants to do a story-based um game on sunday morning like at 9 a.m oh i will not be around but okay. i would like to try it sometime but i won't okay. be around this weekend right. yeah i'm just i'm putting i need to send an email to see if i can find anybody before i open it to one of the other forums that i'm part of is that the sword without master? Swords without master, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still really confused on it, but I'm intrigued by the concept. But I very much want to do more of it. Sure, sure. I, it's a good one. I just find myself much like I did when I was taking improv classes, freezing up and going, "What? What do I do?" Oh, did that happen to you? What, for and did you actually take some improv classes? It's oh, very yeah. improv improvisation, improvisational. Yeah, that yeah. Whole, that whole system, but. Um, I, I need to brush up my chops because I'm going to run it at the Big Bad Con in October, which is, which which I'm sure I'll, I'll do fine at, even if I come into it cold again. But yeah, yeah, we'll practice a little. I think like any games. role playing game, in my view of role playing games anyway, mm -hmm. so I've never been a power gamer, is that as long as you tell a good story, you tell an entertaining story, then that's a successful night. Yeah, and I think I think too from the improvisational aspects of it, it doesn't really need to be done in character. You can certainly do it in character, the narrative in the right. character's voice or switch back and forth between sort of the storyboard or the director's view or the camera, you know, what's happening with the camera or describing the events that are going on around you rather than just trying to narrate it straight from, you know, a first person perspective. Um, so yeah, I, I hope we get a chance to, to mess around with it more. I think it's a fun one. And I very much want to try it at Pacificon if we can. Yeah, I will definitely bug you guys about it at every opportunity I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. That was uh, a fun night. I'm I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna stop the broadcast.